It's time for Avon Varsity Football on Audio Sports Online. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by McDonald's, Reynolds Body Shop, McNamara Florist, and Red Cobra Wrestling. Avon Varsity Football is an audiosportsonline.com production. Now let's head out to the field for tonight's game. The Hoosier Crossroads Conference season begins tonight at Avon High School, and it's a big, big matchup against two traditional teams that, well, they usually opened up the season. This time they meet in week three. It's the eighth-ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals taking on the 13th-ranked Avon Orioles tonight on Audio Sports Online. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to High School Football on ASO. My name is Brian Scott. I'm joined by the Indiana Football Hall of Famer, Dave Shelbourne. Both these teams ready for Hoosier Crossroads Conference action. Streamlined HCC now down to seven teams. That means tonight's game, well, it'll begin a full set of Hoosier Crossroads Conference matchups. Be being that it's now a seven-team league, that means one team each week they are going to be playing a non-conference game. This week it happens to be the Brownsburg Bulldogs. They have traveled to Franklin to take on the Mid-State Conference's Franklin Grizzly Cubs. We have a great one for you here tonight. The Royals, again, they are tied for eighth. They're tied with their rivals, the Fishers Tigers, and they're coming off of a win last week where they took, uh, had a really easy game against the North Central Panthers as they defeated North Central by the score of 38 to nothing. That game started early, uh, the scoring early and often for Hamilton Southeastern. Chris Ford was on the receiving end of an 84-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Tyler Janney, and things just kind of rolled for there for the Southeastern Royals. Tyler Janney in that the senior quarterback for the Royals, he was 6 of 13, 133 yards, not a lot of passing yards. You don't really expect that out of a Hamilton Southeastern team. He threw one touchdown, and he was also picked twice in that game. One of the stars for the Royals is junior running back Aaron Matteo. 19 carries, 106 yards, two touchdowns in that contest. Quarterback Tyler Janney also ran for a touchdown in that game. And also getting to the act was junior tailback Curtis Goss. Again, his one touchdown pass, that went to Chris Ford for 84 yards. Chris Ford, a senior wideout, very athletic, very fast, and he will be somebody that the Avon defensive backs will have to keep track of tonight. For the Avon Orioles, they're coming off of a loss last week to the second ranked in the state of Indiana, Ben Davis Giants, by the score of 57 to 27. If you ask a lot of people after that game, was Avon 30 points bad or was Ben Davis just that good? The answer would be Ben Davis was just that good. Senior quarterback Brandon Peters in that game, well, he matched the highly heralded uh, quarterback for Ben Davis. Kyle Kastner pretty much toe for toe that game. Both quarterbacks threw for over 300 yards. Peters finished that contest 19 of 34, 320 yards. He had one touchdown pass that was an 80 yard strike to Gabe Laxton's to open up the third quarter. He was picked once, but that in self defense for Brandon Peters, that was kind of a desperation throw uh, late in that first half that ended up being intercepted. For the Orioles, the running game just simply did not get on track against a very, very good Ben Davis defense. Junior tailback Darian Love had eight carries for 75 yards. He scored two touchdowns, and the majority of his yards came late in that second half. Derek Tennant, 15 carries for 20 yards. He did have one touchdown, but he also might have had a slight little injury in that contest. He's been held out most of this week, and it would be a game-time decision as whether Derek Tennant would be able to start tonight. I bring in the Indiana Football Hall of Famer, Dave Shelbourne. Coach, we kind of looked. You saw the game film. Let's talk about Avon first. Uh, as I said, a lot of people ask me, is Avon really not that good? And I say, no, Ben Davis is that good. Well, you know, I, I missed the game last week, but I did get a chance to watch the video. And, you know, Ben, ben Davis played a, a, a fabulous game, especially offensively. They possess a lot of skills. Kastner has just a a really nice feel for their offense or kind of in a wide open four wide receiver offense or offensive line is traditionally very strong and powerful up front and they and they prove to be and you know really if you look back on that film a little bit I think what I saw a little bit was that when Ben Davis got ahead I think Avon took a few more chances than what they you know might normally do in a in a little closer game and a, and, and a lot of Ben Davis's scores came on big plays so I'm, I'm sure the 
one thing that they've worked on defensively this week is just to be a little bit, a little bit more sure with their tackling, try to keep, you know, all, all, all the plays in front of them a little bit and, you know, make the offense earn some TDs. Last week, Ben, ben Davis, again, hurt them with a lot of big plays. Offensively, uh, Ben Davis is a pressure-type defense. They bring a lot of people. It's going to be a little hit and miss from an offensive point of view. <clears throat> with Brandon being, you know, a year's experience from starting as a sophomore, he was very patient, uh, picked his spots, and, you know, when, when they did hit, they hit big. You know, he had the 80-yarder to Gabe, and, you know, they, they, they got a lot of man-to-man coverage, and he was smart enough to try to check some matchups. I think they were able to throw to, you know, better receivers against what they felt were a little bit weaker defenders. Uh, Again, when they bring as many people as Ben Davis does on a normal basis, it's going to make it a little tougher to run the football. So offensively, I'm sure the emphasis is going to be on getting back to the running game a little bit. And defensively, I think if if Avon could just be a little bit more sound and not give up some of those big plays, I, I, I think they'll be fine. Talk to Avon head football coach Mark Bless uh, on the field before tonight's broadcast. He said one of the things that, of course, they really wanted to do again this week, make sure they got off to a good start. They had a very slow start against Lawrence Central. They didn't do too bad last week against Ben Davis. The defense came out, actually held Ben Davis to a pair of three and outs. Uh, Avon, a three and out of their own before they did end up scoring a touchdown. But as that Ben Davis offensive juggernaut started rolling, it was really hard for the Orioles to get out of the way. Ben Davis, a lot of skilled uh, position players, not to mention Kyle Kastner, a quarterback, but Darian Tate at the tailback position. Uh, Brennan Gillis is a very, very talented wide receiver. True Smith was also very good. And when you've got three wide receivers that are all six foot one or taller, and Brennan Gillis is six foot six against a set of defensive backs for the Avon Orioles that were basically, uh, with the exception of, I think, Gabe Laxton's at 6'2", uh, pretty much everybody is under six foot. Well, and, and I think part of it from what I saw is, they're, you know, they're in the shotgun all the time. Uh, a lot of the passes they're throwing are kind of, you know, quick time types of passes. They're not trying to go way downfield. It's more get the ball out short to their talented wide receivers and, and let them run with it. And, you know, their, their, their quarterback's experience. He was very good about uh, handling the pressure, picking up open receivers. And, you know, we, we didn't really do a very good job. I, I didn't think on, uh, from what I saw, you know, putting a lot of pressure on him, making him throw on the run, uh, making him throw into coverage, that type of thing. So it, it'll be interesting tonight. It's a, uh, two, two great football teams, but Hamilton Southeastern style of play is totally different from Ben Davis. They're a, uh, a very patient offense. They'll run the football, play field possession, field position. Uh, be very patient. Try to run the football, play action pass a little bit. Try to hit you with multiple formations. Defensively, they're in I guess what I would call a bend but not break type of philosophy. It's a a three four look. They don't blitz a lot. They blitz on occasion. Their secondary is primarily zone, and their their whole philosophy again is to keep everything in front of you make the offense execute flawlessly. And if you're going to score on a team like Southeastern, you're not going to see those home run type of plays. They're going to force you to, you know, put together a series of 8 to 15 plays where you're going to have to execute flawlessly to put something on the board. We will talk more about the Hamilton Southeastern Royals when we come back. You're watching the pregame show on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino Nodell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. 
They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. McNamara Floors is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Floors is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Floors for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Floors is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Welcome back to Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School. Hoosier Crossroads Conference begins tonight as the 8th-ranked Southeastern Royals visit the 13th-ranked Avon Orioles. Alongside the Indiana Football Hall of Famer Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. We talked a little bit about the Avon Orioles at the beginning of the pregame show. Now let's take a look at the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. All of us here want to welcome all of our fans from Hamilton Southeastern who are tuning in to tonight's broadcast, the joint broadcast between Avon and Hamilton Southeastern. They are coming off the win last week against North Central by the score of 38 to nothing as Hamilton Southeastern got on an early roll, as I mentioned, an 84-yard touchdown pass from Tyler Janney to Chris Ford. That got the Hamilton Southeastern Royals offense on track. They were a little bit off kilter during the Carmel game, and while that score ended up in favor of the top ranked Carmel Greyhounds 14 to 7 it was the Hamilton Southeastern defense that pretty much stepped up in that game to keep it only a 14 to 7 game however they came back next week last week I should say defeated North Central by the score of 38 to nothing uh, a very good performance by the Hamilton Southeastern offense Aaron Matteo he had a couple of touchdown runs Tyler Janney a run on his own and Curtis Goss ended the scoring for the Royals in the fourth quarter with a one-yard touchdown run as coach Shelbourne we've watched coach May for quite a few years uh, every time we see a Hamilton Southeastern offense in a defense they're not going to surprise you with a lot of things, but they're just simply going to do what they do very well. They're, they're, they're fundamentally sound, very well coached, and, you know, like, like most good programs, they have a philosophy. They pretty well stick to it. They're uh, very physical on both sides of the ball. They believe very strongly in running the football to set up the passing game. They, uh, they, they, they like to run the play-action pass, and, and I think the ultimate thing that they do is they just try not to beat themselves. Very seldom are you going to see them fumble, put the ball on the ground. Uh, they're generally not in a lot of third and eight type situations, and they're going to try to do everything they can to, to have good and maintain good field position throughout the night. Defensively, kind of the same philosophy. You don't see a lot of blitzing. They're going to try and keep uh, you know everything in front of them and uh, inside of them. If they give up a run of four or five uh, yards, they can live with it. If they give up a first down, it really doesn't kill them which you very seldom will see a southeastern team do is, you know, give up a, a big play, a 50, 60 yarder. They're not going to be out of position in the secondary. Uh, they're sound tacklers in the open field. And, you know, you'll just flat out see them, you know, in football terminology, you'll see them flat out pursuing to the football. And normally speaking, a southeastern team, you're going to have six, seven, eight guys around the football every time. 
They're led by senior quarterback Tyler Danny, a 5'11", 200-pound senior. Not throwing for a whole lot of yards, but as Coach mentioned, that's not something Southeastern really goes out and does a ton of. He's thrown for 248 yards, one touchdown. He has thrown two interceptions. They will really rely on the running game, and right now they will go behind the 6'2", 200-pound junior tailback. Aaron Matteo. Matteo on the season, 195 yards. He has scored three touchdowns, but you will see quite a few different tailbacks in there for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Curtis Goss is less than his fullback, but he will also play a little bit tailback, and David Seetze will also see some action at tailback. But it primarily will be Matteo, Matteo and Goss, and then you will also see Tyler Janney is not afraid to run the football. If he gets outside the pocket, he is not afraid to take it up the field, and he's just going to be one of those quarterbacks that if you're an Avon Oriole defender, you're going to have to keep tabs on him all game long. The Hamilton Southeastern Royals, they also have a couple of nice skill possession uh, players. You take a look at the wide receiver. Chris Ford is a 6'1", 170-pound senior wide out. He's got good size. He's got excellent speed. And he's a guy that can get down the field and get behind your defensive backs very easily. They also have a 6'4", 230-pound senior tight end, Kyle Schrank. He is going to play at the next level. He's playing at Ball State next year. He is a big weapon for Janney and this Hamilton Southeastern offense. As you take a look on the field, the Avon Orioles will be dressed in black. They have the white numerals with the yellow trim and the Southeastern Royals. The the, uh, royal blue pants with the white jerseys and blue numbers and the silver helmets. As we get ready for football tonight here on Audio Sports Online, as I mentioned, the 8th-ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals, the 13th-ranked Avon Orioles. Uh, this is the, over the last 20 years. Southeastern has had the better of this matchup. They are 10-7 and seven over the last 20 years, including a 28-7 win last year at Hamilton Southeastern. That was Brandon Peters' first game uh, under center for the Avon Orioles. And he had some moments where he looked pretty good in that game, but other times, well, it looked like it was his first time under center for Avon. Last week, as I mentioned, Hamilton Southeastern, they defeated North Central by the score of 38 to nothing, where Avon lost to number two Ben Davis by the score of 57 to 27. We should have a fantastic football game for you tonight, and we hope that you enjoy high school football tonight on Audio Sports Online. It is warm, it is muggy, the sun is out, the wind is blowing from the south as you take a look at the field. The south is to your right as teams are currently at the uh, midfield stripe as they get ready for the coin toss. We are expecting the possibility of a shower or possible thunderstorm, so we'll keep an eye on that. Rain we can deal with, lightning, well, that's another story. We're getting ready for football. We hope you enjoy it tonight as it will be the Avon Orioles receiving the opening kickoff, so... Sit back, grab something cold to drink. We hope you enjoy high school football tonight on Audio Sports Online. Andrew Griffin and Bryant Fitzgerald will drop back deep for the Avon Orioles as it will be Brady Hoffman, a 6-foot, 175-pound senior that will do the kicking duties for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Again, Coach Mark Bless of the Avon Orioles, he said the big key tonight, the Orioles wanted to get off to a good start. They'll have the ball first as we get ready to kick this one off and get this game underway. Hoffman puts a right foot into it, a high kick that's going to go into the end zone about nine yards deep. And the Avon offense will take the field first and 10 at their own 20. They're led by the 6'5", 195-pound junior quarterback Brandon Peters. Across the offensive line, Nick Shoemaker, Zach Ryan, Brady Nyland, Ross Carter, and Ryan Dickinson. The tight end is Matt Moore. He had a good game against Ben Davis. The flanker is Andrew Griffin. The split end tonight will be Cole Wrightley. Zach Batustic is the fullback. Derek Tennant is the scheduled tailback, but it will be Darian Love that takes first snap. Derek was a game-time decision, and as we start this game, we see that Derek, uh, Darian Love, is the tailback. So first and ten for Avon from their own 20. And in the first play, Brandon Peters looks, fires, looking for Andrew Griffin, and it is incomplete, almost picked off. The free safety, David Herman, a 5'10", 175-pound senior, 
tried to pick that one off the carpet. It's incomplete and a little bit of miscommunication between Brandon and Andrew on that play. Yeah, a little bit. They're, they're, they're a zone-type team, so what you need to do to move the football thrown is you're going to have to find those kind of openings. Uh, that was a seam route. He tried to hit him in between two defenders, and, again, the timing was a little off. It will be rightly Griffin and Moore split out wide to the left as Peters will have Darian Love to his right working out of the gun. Peters drops back to pass on second and 10, now picks it up and runs with it to 25, and he will slide down shy of the 30. He's going to be about three yards shy at about the 20 seven yard line that'll bring up third and three you know and and we we may see uh, a a lot more of that tonight southeastern is more what i would call a cover team you'll see them they're going to drop at least seven sometimes they're going to drop eight people and they're they're going to make again make sure you don't throw deep they'll allow you to throw the little dink passes and run a little bit and come up and try to tackle you so you know, protection should be good, but finding the open area is going to be a little tougher. This is Darian Love, but he will not even make it to the line of scrimmage before he is brought down on a fine defensive play. Is shooting through the gap was the nose guard, a 6'2", 230-pound senior, Casey Hayes, to drop Love for about a one-yard loss back to the 26th, and that'll bring a fourth down for the Orioles. Yeah, not, not, a lot of, not a lot of blitzing, but that time they guessed right. They took their linemen and slanted them to the tight end thinking that uh, there might be a power type play of of some kind out of Avon and they guessed right that time and stopped him for a loss. Chris Ford and David Herman back deep for the punt. They'll stand at their own 40 yard line as Alex Steffen will do the punting duties as he stands back as 12. A little bobble. He gets a very high punt. This is going to give the Royals excellent field positions. It takes a Royals bounce and it will be down at the 35 yard line. A net of only four yards, and it will be first and 10 for the Royals with 10.30 left in this opening quarter with excellent field position. Bringing the Royal offense onto the field is a 5'11", 200-pound senior, Tyler Janney. And they will immediately come out to the line of scrimmage with two wides to the near side, one to the far side as Aaron Matteo will stand to the right of Janney at working out of the gun on this first and 10 from the... 35 yard line and Matteo has it and he's going nowhere is shooting the gap actually that was the quarterback or actually little, excuse me it was Janney with the quarterback little, little little read option there he faked the ball made it look like they were going to run off tackle to the left and kept it coming back uh, Avon kept their position like they should and stopped them for a short uh, short run AJ Elcock making the tackle he's lining up as a linebacker tonight a few changes on the defensive alignments for Avon on this second and seven here is Matteo he will run to the right side and he's going to have some good hard running before Rashawn Brent can bring him down quickly let's give you the Royals offense across the offensive line Ashman Lucas Lucas Laner Ty Schull Chase Wilson Jeremy Wolfer the tight end is Kyle Schrank the wideouts Chris Ford and Will Cudre the fullback is Curtis Goss, tailback Aaron Matteo, and the quarterback is Tyler Janney as the Royals have a third and five from the Avon 30-yard line. Clock moves a lot, 9.26 remaining in this opening quarter, and it's the opening drive for Hamilton Southeastern. They will bring Shrank in motion as Janney is back to pass, looks to the right side, and right out of the break will Kudre saw the football a little bit behind him couldn't reach back and get it and bring a fourth down for southeastern yeah good good defensive stand for avon you know they three three and out and had to punt on their first series and had the short punt gave them field position uh the defense came out and did what they had to do and it looks like a long field goal attempt here for southeastern 47 yard field goal attempt by brady hoffman and we are going to have a timeout as Coach Scott may, may be rethinking this long field goal. We'll take a timeout as well. 9-13 opening quarter, no score. You're watching high school football on ASO. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. After the timeout, indeed, Southeastern will try the field goal. This is a 47-yard attempt. 
from with, the right hash. Yeah, with the win. The win to Hoffman's back. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. It's got the leg, and it's good. A 47-yard field goal from Brady Hoffman. And the Royals are on the board first with 9.08 left to go in this first quarter. 3-0 Royals back in a moment. This is high school football on ASO. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. Excellent field position after the punt leads to a 47-yard field goal by the Royals' Brady Hoffman. And Hamilton Southeastern takes an early 3-0 lead alongside Dale Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott as Hoffman set to kick this one away back deep is Brian Fitzgerald for the Orioles. <laughs> I coached a long time, and one of the bigger changes that you see now in football is, and, and it, not a lot of people notice, but they kicked the ball into the end zone. Avon had less than a 10-yard punt, and they got a high school kid coming out and easily kicking a 47-yard field goal. Here's another kickoff into the end zone. And again, in my early years of kicking, if you could kick the, get a kickoff inside the 20, you had a kicker with a strong leg. If you could even think about kicking a field goal over 30 yards, you thought you had an all-state kicker, and now it's it's pretty commonplace. And you know, I'd, I'd have to you know put a put a thank you out there to the soccer people because most of these kids come in pretty well prepared. The best thing I think sometimes we do as football coaches is just pat them on the back and not try to screw them up or teach them how to kick. But 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 the kicking game has changed drastically. Uh, in, in the last few years in football. Brandon Peters with Darian Love to his right, but Peters backs the throw. He has Matt Moore down the seam. Moore eludes one tackle, uh, runs over a Royal defender, and adds a tw- pickup of about 12 yards for a first down for <coughs> Avon. Let's quickly give you the Southeastern defense. They'll run a 3-4 across the defensive line. Caleb Clayton, Casey Hayes, and Bradley Murphy. The linebackers are Colin Miller, Ryan Clements, Justin Voskel, and Andrew Notar Donato. The corners are Matt White and Ryan Brown, and the safeties David Herman and Brock Burns. First and 10 for Avon at their own 32-yard line. They'll send two wide outs to the near side as Peters hands the ball off and running right up the middle for a gain of about three yards on the play is running for Avon getting his first carry is Giovanni Blades, a six foot, 175 pound senior. So evidently Derek Tennant will not play tonight as they have brought Blades in to spell Darian Love. It will be second down and about seven for Avon from their own 35-yard line. Clock moves, a late 8-11 left to go first quarter. Peters gets the ball, now runs to the right side before he's going to be run out of bounds. Matt White made sure he got out of bounds, and looks like Brand is going to be very close, but maybe about a yard and a half shy of a first down. You know, that, that, that was a, I don't know if it was a bad snap, a bad catch or whatever, but it was a, a mishandled play and Brandon is just a good enough athlete to still make something out of it and and get it up here close to a first down. I like the philosophy right now that Coach Moore is using. You know, again, you're not going to go deep on this team. You got a a kid like Matt Moore who I think is a a mismatch for any linebacker in the state and they're going to get him open, I think, in the middle, you know, in between the seams just about any time they want. They're going to have to be patient offensively and right now that's what they're doing. There's a first down. They're up to midfield, and they're moving to football. That's a good. It, that's one of the big advantages Avon has with a 6'5", 195, close to 200-pound Brandon Peters. Just takes it right over his 5'10", 250-pound senior center, Brady Nyland, and they pick up the first down. A new set of downs for Avon. This time the ball will be spotted at their own 43-yard line, first and 10. Peters works out of the gun. Takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks near side, looking for Braden loose. And they say the catch is complete. 
out past the midfield stripe into Royal Territory at the 49-yard line. You know, again, Ham Hamill Southeastern right now, they're not upset. That's their philosophy. They're willing to give up that little, you know, that, that little route right there. It, it took a good snap, a good throw, a good route, a good catch, and good protection. They're counting on Avon not to be able to do that, but that's the way you have to attack their defense. Braden loses to the near side. Cole Riley and Andrew Griffin to the far side, but here is a run right over the right side tackle. Again, Giovanni Blades with the carry, and he's got a pickup of about 12 yards down to the Royal 41-yard line. It's another set of downs for Avon, first and 10 at the Southeastern 41. And, and, and I like the surge by the offensive line that time. They came out, handled the line of scrimmage. Before on the third down, they allowed penetration. This time they came and knocked Southeastern off the ball to get the first down. High backfield has Batustic and Blades. The give is to Blades. He will go right up the middle and pick up two or three yards, if that, before he is going to be brought down. Tiger Guillory, a 6'4", 190-pound senior defensive tackle for Southeastern in there to make the stop after about a one-yard gain. And we have an official's timeout as some e possible equipment malfunction. as Avon came to the line of scrimmage and the officials called them off. Well, after seeing a whole lot of spread offenses in high school football, this is going to be a traditional of both teams huddling it up, clock moving, six, under 6.30 left to go in this first quarter. Peters works out of the gun on second and nine, flips it to Griffin over the left side, and Andrew is not going to get a whole lot of yards before Ryan Brown, a 6'170 170-pound junior corner, is there to meet him on a well-defense play by Hamilton Southeastern. You know, again, they'll, they'll, they'll let Avon throw that short ball, and then they're just going to run like crazy to the football and try to keep that game to short yardage. Right now, Southeastern is exactly where they want to be. They've got Avon in the third and eight. Uh, you know, not that Avon can't get it, but they're behind schedule. Chances are now they're going to have to force a throw. You're going to see deeper drops and wider pass rush lanes by the defensive lineman from Southeastern. Andrew Griffin works slot right as Peters takes a snap, rolls. He's looking down. He has Griffin wide open at the ninth 21-yard line, and he is going to pick up a big, big third down conversion before the strong safety Brock Burns can bring him down. But that time, they let Andrew Griffin, Griffin get in between the zone and he sat there and Brandon Peters found him for a nice pickup and a third down conversion. Well, once again, great, great patience by the Avon offense. Nice call by Coach Moore. Uh, they stretched the zone a little bit, got him downfield. He got enough for the first down and credit the Avon offensive line again for giving him plenty of time to find the open receiver on a little bit deeper uh, pass route. Ball's at the Royal 22-yard line. Darian Love will take the ball, and he will run around the left side and pick up three or four yards before William uh, Colin Miller, the weak side linebacker, 6'3", 230-pound junior, is able to bring him down. But a nice pickup by Darian of almost five yards. Nice cutback. That was actually a play designed to go outside. It's an outside zone play designed to run outside the tight end. Southeastern overran it. He saw the little opening inside and ducked it back inside for five or six yards. The second down and five for the Orioles it is rightly working the slot with Griffin to his right over here on the near side. Braden Luce is a wide out to the far side. Peters out of the gun. Pressure comes. He gets hit, but he gets rid of the football, and Braden Luce will have it inside the five down to about the three for a first down as it looked like. Colin Miller, the weak side backer, applied some pressure to Peters. The Peters was able to get rid of the football, and it's going to be first and goal for Avon. Well, it's a, it's a guessing game, and, you know, at least on this drive so far, Avon has been very patient. I, I, I like the play calling by Coach Moore. He's not being greedy. You know, they're taking four or five yards at a time. They're mixing up the pass and run. They're trying to find the open seams, and so far they've, had, they've put together a nice offensive drive. Peters. Did not get the snap from center, and there is a penalty flag. I think everybody moved, but Brady Nyland forgot to snap the football, and it's going to cost them five yards. Well, this this, this is, again, part of the Southeastern philosophy. They're, they're counting on the offense. You know, it's very difficult for an offense at any level, whether it be high school, you know, Division One or the NFL, to put together 8, 10, 12 plays without making some kind of a mental error. 
Avon has a nice drive going here. They get inside the 10 yard line and the first mental error of the uh, of the drive now puts them back to where they're, you know, they're, they've, they lost five yards on the play. First and goal from the eight, offset eye as the give is to Love, looks for some room around the right side and a saving tackle is just, Love is gonna be shy of the goal line coming up to make the tackle was the safety. Brock Burns, a 6'4", 175 pound sophomore. He was able to get Darian Love right before Love reached the goal line and it's a touchdown saving tackle to bring up second and goal for Avon. This has been a great series for the Avon offensive line. No penetration that time they came off the ball. Uh, tight end, Matt Moore just handled the defensive end with ease that time and that's what made the play. Brandon Peters will keep it himself, no signal. And touchdown for the Avon Orioles. Brandon Peters runs it in from a yard out. And the Avon Orioles have a 12-play drive that takes off over six minutes a clock. And they now have a 6-3 lead pending the point after. Very, very impressive offensive drive. I really like the play calling again, like I mentioned. Uh, they nickeled and dime. They took the short throws. They mixed in the run. Other than the one bobbled snap, uh, no mental errors, and just a very, very impressive drive for the Avon Orioles. Alex Steffen puts the point after through, and with 3.22 left to go in this first quarter, the Orioles take the lead 7-3. to three. Back with a kickoff after this. This is High School Football on Audio Sports Online. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954 with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. A 12-play drive that covers 80 yards in 5 minutes, 55 seconds, ends in a Brandon Peters one-yard touchdown run. The point after is good by Alex Steffen, and the Avon Orioles lead Hamilton Southeastern 7-0 alongside Dave Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott. Glad you could join us for high school football on Audio Sports Online. Alex Steffen has taken over the kicking duties. It was the sophomore Sam Perino for Avon that started the season as the kicker. But as of late, it's been Alex Steffen that has been doing now all the kicking duties. He is kicking off, doing the points after, and punting as well as he gets ready to boot this ball deep as Chris Ford and David Herman, I believe, will be back deep. It is actually Chris Ford and Austin Holzem back deep for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. The Southeastern finds themselves trailing 7-3, to 322 left to go in this opening quarter of play. Again, a warm, muggy night. The wind in the face of Alex Steffen. It is blowing from the south at, I would imagine, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So he will be kicking this one into the wind. Alex with a run up and puts a right foot into it. It's going to hang up and be taken by Ford at the 13 to the 20. Looks for some room around the right side to the 25, to the 30, to the 35. And finally, a run out of bounds on a fine return by Chris Ford and Southeastern, who had excellent field position after a very short Avon punt. Oriole defense held him to a field goal now on a good return. They'll have pretty good field position to start their second drive of this football game, and they will do so at the 35-yard line with 316 left to go in this first quarter. Well, we're, we're kicking into the wind that time, but you know we had started both our series on the 20, and they're starting on the 35, and the last time I think they were on about the 30, so field position has been to Hamilton Southeastern's advantage. Split backs as they go run around the right side is Aaron Matteo with the carry. Again, a six foot, 200 pound junior tailback, and he'll pick up about three yards on the play up to the 39 yard line, call it second and seven. It's early in the game, but I, I, I like the way Avon's defense is playing. They had a three and out. They're playing the run well. They seem to be uh, moving to the football very well and, uh, you know, playing with a lot of intensity here early tonight. 
Janney will work under center this time. It's Will Kudre to the near side. Play action pass. Janney back to pass. Here is a pass deep downfield intended for Chris Ford. Almost a fantastic grab by Ford. Meanwhile, coming in on the blitz for the Avon Orioles playing linebacker in this game was the 5'10", 195-pound junior A.J. Elcock as he laid a hit on the senior quarterback for the Royers, Tyler Janney. Yeah, great great coverage deep there by Nick Hanlon. He was in man-to-man coverage. They did put a little pressure on. It was a pretty good throw, but he had good enough coverage to knock that ball clean on, on what could have been a touchdown. Chris Ford and Greg Miller are the wideouts to the near side. They'll bring Schrank in motion to the near side on this third and seven. Janney back to pass. Looks for to get some pressure. Fires downfield. Has Chris Ford at the 40. To the 35-30. And a touchdown saving tackle made by Nick Handlin. Ford, as I mentioned, he's a big target. He's got great speed. And it's a big gain for Southeastern into Oriole territory all the way down to the 27-yard line. Yeah, good, good composure shown by the Southeastern quarterback because all of his receivers were covered. He hung in there. The line gave him enough time. And, you know, the, those were just receivers kind of scrambling around, made the big good move toward the, uh, toward the goal line, and uh, he found them open, and we were lucky to save a touchdown. They'll spot the ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10. Here's Matteo with the carry. He will go around the right side, fumble. The ball is loose, and Avon has recovered. And Aaron Matteo fumble as the Royals get a big play to get deep in Avon territory again. But this time, Matteo coughs it up, and the Orioles recover at their own 24-yard line. Good call at the right time. Brian Fitz... uh, Ryan Fitzgerald is really a strong safety, came off the edge that time unblocked. Uh, he was able to be there at the handoff and knocked the ball clean. Uh, the ball ended up on the ground, a big turnover for Avon, and Avon, who really kicked the offense in gear the last time they had the ball, gets an opportunity to do it again. So Avon has the ball first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Peters has love to his right, Griffin and rightly to the neck near side. All the time in the world for Peters, finds loose, leaking out. He is up to the 34, and he has a pickup of just beyond 10 yards, enough for an Oriole first down. Yeah, ni- nice catch and throw, but again, and we'll try to mention everybody's name, I'm really impressed with the way the Avon offensive line has played so far. Not a lot of pressure on Brandon. When they've been running the football, there hasn't been uh, any penetration, and, and, and at least right now, early in the game, they seem to be controlling the the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're going to say that Braden was just shy of the first down mark. It'll be second in a few inches as Brandon Peters will work out of a gun looking over that three-man royal front. The give is to Love, who, or excuse me, Giovanni Blades, who shakes one tackle, and he'll have enough for an Oriole first down past the 35, close to the 36-yard line. So first and 10 for Avon as the clock will start up once again with a minute 17 left to go in the opening quarter. The Orioles rank 13th in Class 6A this week, lead the 8th ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals by the score of 7 to 3. First and 10 Avon as they will send three wideouts to the near side. Peters back to pass. That ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage as they usually tell you if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. That is exactly what the Royal defensive line did, and they managed to tip the ball at the line of scrimmage. They did, because we, we had Matt Moore again wide open, just you know, a l- little hitch route about seven, eight yards down the field. That's the opening in the zone. Uh, Avon you know, was trying to be patient enough just to kind of exploit it. Matt is an outstanding athlete, uh, great baseball pitcher. Probably that's where his future is, but uh, you know, he's going to have a big night tonight. Peters will hand the ball off. I believe this is Blades once again as Giovanni Blades will pick up a couple of yards, but it's going to bring up a big third down in about eight yards as the clock winds down here in the first quarter as the Orioles will have to run a play before the end of the first quarter. Third and eight for Avon from their own 38-yard line. Braden loose to the far side. Andrew Griffin works the slot near side along with Cole Wrightley, the wide out to the near side. 
Blades to the left of Peters working out of the gun. A three-man front for Hamilton Southeastern. Peters back to pass. Looks, has Andrew Griffin at the 50-yard line into Royal Territory, down inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. A big third down completion and another big catch by Andrew Griffin. I mean, that's, that, that's great patience by an experienced group. Even though they're just juniors, Brandon and Andrew have a little knack for, for doing that. Southeastern dropped eight. I mean, they had five underneath and three deep, went with a three-man rush. So, you know, there's, no, there's not a whole lot of room in there underneath, but somehow or another they found that spot, put the ball on the money, and again, plenty of time to throw the football. It's going to be the end of the first quarter of play here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School. The 13th-ranked Orioles lead the 8th-ranked Royals by the score at 7-3. Back with second quarter action right after this. This is High School Football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino Nodell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Second quarter about to get underway here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School alongside Dave Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott. Hamilton Southeastern, well, they had the first lead of this contest on a 47-yard Brady Hoffman field goal, but Avon answered with a long touchdown drive capped by a one-yard Brandon Peters touchdown run. And after a big play from Tyler Jamie to Chris Ford, Aaron Matteo, he fumbled on the next play, and it ended up with the ball becoming the possession of Avon. And now Avon has marched it down to the Royal 44-yard line where they will have it first and 10 and a seven, or excuse me, a four-point lead as we get the second quarter underway here at Avon High School. Peters will work out of the gun in this first and 10. He will give it to the tailback and going straight ahead and getting a few yards, and that's going to be it before the 6'2", 230-pound senior nose guard, Casey Hayes, comes in and plants. Uh, I believe that is going to be Darian Love uh, to the ground, or excuse me, that is once again Giovanni Blades uh, with the carry for a short gain of a yard. Yeah, tough, tough to feel it up here in the press box, but Avon also has the wind this quarter. If you look out there at the flag, it's a little stiffer wind than we think up here in the press box because it's pretty hot up here in the press box. <laughs> second and nine for the Orioles as we are underway here in the second quarter. Peters backs the pass, has pocket present, tries to get the ball to Andrew Griffin, but excellent coverage there by Grant Skelton at the linebacker position, a 6'1", 185-pound junior for Southeastern. He had great coverage that time, and it falls incomplete. It'll bring it third and long for Avon. But again, good, good, good patience, good good call. They ran off the wide receiver, tried to bring Andrew underneath, let him kind of feel his way through uh, in between the linebackers. It was good coverage that time, but, uh, you know, I, I like the play call. Rightly will work out of the slot left along with Andrew Griffin as the other wideout near side. Braden Luce is the wideout to the far side on this third and long. Peters back to pass. Fires over the right side. Braden Luce with the catch, and he will be pushed out of bounds over on that far side by the 5'11", 180-pound senior cornerback, Matt White. But it's another big third down conversion by Avon. They'll have it first and 10 at the Royal 31-yard line. Well, Avon and uh, Coach Eric Moore and Brandon Peters right now are winning the guessing game. That time late, they, they changed to kind of a strong rotation, and I don't know if uh, you know if that was a play call or Brandon recognized it because he went back to the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the weak side where he was wide open for the first down. Here's a give. Darian Love looks for some room around the left side and nothing doing as the Royals sniff that one out big time. Coming in to make the tackle was the free safety, a 5'10", 175-pound senior, David Herman, for a loss of about three on the play. Yeah, I, th I think really right now we're just kind of running as much to keep him honest, possibly set up a little play action 
play here before too long. Anytime the strong safety comes up and makes a tackle in the backfield like that, that tells you that they're selling out to the run pretty quickly, which really kind of sets you up later on for a little play action pass off of that and throwing the football into that open zone. Moore, Wrightley, and Griffin to the far side. Braden loose to the near side. Play action pass. Peters will keep it, and he's going to actually pick up a few yards. Thought he was going to be stopped for no gain, but Bradley Murphy finally able to bring him down, but not before Brandon Peters is able to get back near the original line of scrimmage of the 31-yard line. It'll bring up third and long once again for Avon. Yeah, I mean, I actually, it looked like Coach Moore and I must be thinking alike because that's they, they ran that little play action off the inside zone fake. Uh, they got a little pressure off the corner, so Brandon really never had a chance to, to look downfield and find an open receiver. Good pressure by the defensive line. Well, another third down and long for Avon, and they've been able to convert on several of these. Peters, the draw play to Darian Love, finds some room up the middle. He will not get the first down, but he will take it inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line, and that might make it uh, a much easier decision, though it looks like the Orioles are going to lead the offense on the field for this fourth and two. Nice delay play. Uh, Southeastern likes to drop their linebackers into coverage. Uh, the, the play was kind of a, a, really a delay draw. They wanted the linebackers to drop out of there. They wanted the defensive linemen to kind of establish their pass rushing lanes. And Darian did a nice job finding the opening and almost picking up the first down. Fourth and two, but two stick and love in the eye out behind Peters. Brandon may be trying to get him to go off sides. And now Avon will call timeout likely to send Alex Steffen out there trying to see if they can get the Royals to give him a cheap five yards and good discipline as you would expect from a Hamilton Southeastern coach team they didn't bite on that and it will be the field goal unit that's going to take the field for Avon yeah point points of any any kind in a game like this are going to be important so you know if we can come away we've been kicking the ball well like I mentioned earlier we we do have the wind in our back and if we can get three up here it's not the seven that you hope for but three on the board in a game like this is going to be important Alex Steffen on the season he's only attempted one field goal he made that and it was a 47 yarder that was a big uh, key against uh, Lawrence Central and Alex Steffen will come out to attempt a 40 yard field goal with 8.59 left to go in quarter number two Avon leads seven to three as they make sure that they have 11 players on the field. Stefan, nice long kick. It's up. It's good. And Avon increases their lead with 8.54 left to go. First half back in a moment. This is Oriole Football on ASO. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown florist since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Alex Steffen with a 40-yard field goal extends the Avon advantage to 7, 10 to 3 with 8.54 left to go in this first half of play. Another long drive by the Orioles. This one, 10 plays, takes up almost four minutes of clock uh, between the end of the first quarter and the beginning of the second. And Alex Steffen will kick the, get ready to kick this one deep. Chris Ford is back deep. He is going to be joined back there as I'll give it to you in a minute. Here's a high kick that's going to be taken by Ford at the 6 to the 15 to the 20 eludes one tackler to the 25 and finally he's going to have to step out of bounds as he runs out of room near there near the southeastern 28 yard line and that is where southeastern will begin this drive first and 10 trailing by 7 with a 49 left to go first half of play. 
Yeah, I, I, I like the vibe tonight. I like the way Avon's carrying themselves. Very workmanlike, a uh, little bit of a strut in their walk, a lot of confidence. Uh, they're doing it right now on, on, on both ends in the kicking game. You know, it's a nice 40-yard field goal. So right now they're just playing good, solid football, getting after things offensively, and playing good, solid defense. For Janney and the Royals offense, they had excellent field position that led to the long 47-yard field goal, but that was basically a three and out. As Janney back to pass, fires near side, passes complete to the tight end, who will be taken out near the 35-yard line. As coming up is Braden Arnold, a 6'4", 215-pound senior, and he is going to pick up uh, close to about eight yards on that play for on the uh, first play of this drive. First and, or excuse me, second and two for the Ro Royals. Heading out to the far side will be Will Crudre, Chris Ford to the near side. Janney back to pass, looks, and that one's batted down at the line of scrimmage. As coming in is Matt Thompson, the six foot, 205 pound junior linebacker for the Orioles, to knock that one away. Matt, Matt, Matt's become a real quality performer. Uh, had a good, solid sophomore year. He's kind of one of the mainstays of the defense now. Great runner, good hitter. Uh, you don't often see him make mistakes or miss tackles. Came up with a big play there. Does look like Southeastern's changed their philosophy a little bit, though. They're coming out here throwing the football. Avon stopped to run a little bit. Looks like they're trying to loosen him up with the pass. Third and two for Southeastern. Janney will keep it. Looks for some room, and he's not going to get very far before A.J. Elcock comes in and makes the tackle for a loss of about a yard and a half back just beyond the Royals 35, close to the 36-yard line. And it looks like it's going to be another three and out for Southeastern. Very steady, very sound, uh, just doing all the right things tonight. Avon's running to the football, getting where they're supposed to be, and they're really doing it with, without a lot of stunning and blitzing. They're just doing it by playing good, solid football. Andrew Griffin and Matt Thompson back deep. High snap, but a good job by David Herman, who gets off one whale of a kick. And it'll be Matt Thompson with a fair catch at the Avon 36-yard line. A very, very good job by the 5'10", 175-pound senior punter for the Royals. It was a high snap. He got it down and got a good kick off. And the Orioles will start this drive from their own 36-yard line with 7.29 left to go in the first half and a 10-3 lead over Hamilton Southeastern. Yeah, plenty of time, good field position. You know, they, they can use every play in the arsenal. They can mix things up. There's no hurry. I see they've got Gabe Laskins in there as a wide receiver also. Laxton's is lined up to the near side. Penalty flag as this play starts. They will let it complete as Giovanni Blades is going to pick up about three yards, but they'll have an illegal motion against the Avon Orioles. Yeah, and this is the thing that they just can't do. They've been moving the football. They've been doing a lot of good things. It's the mental errors that usually hurt you the most. And, you know, again, with the, with the style that Southeastern plays, that's kind of what they're counting on. You know, Avon is sitting here now. They've been in second and four, second and five situations most of the night. Now they're in a first and 15. So first and 15 is Laxton's and Griffin will come to the near side. It's Batustic and Blades in the eye behind Peters who will work this time under his center, Brady Nyland. First and 15 for Avon as play action pass. Peters looks, fires down the middle, has Andrew Griffin at the 50 to the 45 and he will finally be ridden down at around the 41 yard line. Matt White makes the tackle, but once again, Andrew Griffin finds the hole of the defense. Brandon Peters delivers a strike. And it's a big, big play for the Avon Orioles. You know, and, and the offensive line in the running game set that up. Play action pass uh, to, to the side away from the slot. Andrew was kind of able to kind of slow play, find the opening. The offensive line gave him plenty of time. He found the seam and ran and put the ball on the money. Ball's at the Royal 42-yard line on this first and 10. A quick hitter out to Griffin. Andrew looks to eludes one tackle, and he's going to get a, about five, six yards. Looked like David Herman was there to make the tackle for no gain, but Andrew, with a little bit of a spin move, took it back upfield. And instead of no gain, he picks up about six down to the Royal 36-yard line. Yeah, you know, when, when, when you run a play like that, you count on your athlete to be better than their athlete. Uh, 
their defender was there to make the tackle in the open field for no gain. Andrew made the good move and uh, picked up six yards. Blades and Batustic in the eye behind Peters under center. Here's the give to Giovanni Blades. Looks for some room. Finds a little bit around the left side before he is finally stacked up. Ryan Clements came in to make the hit from his inside linebacker position, a 5'11", 195-pound senior. But Blades with a gain down to the Royal 33-yard line. It'll be third in about a yard. Yeah, and, and, you know, they're in a position right here where they'll have a choice to make. I mean, assuming they, if they don't make the first down, they're still going to have one yard to go here. You know, what they need to do here is obviously come come up with the first down, but if they don't, they're still in position to consider going for it on fourth down. Avon is going to call the second of their three allotted timeouts. 6.04 left to go in the first half. The Orioles lead the Royals 10-3. Back in a moment, this is High School Football on Audio Sports Online. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. After the timeout, the Orioles will have it third and one from Hamilton Southeastern's 33-yard line. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Avon oh, really? with a 10-3 lead with 6.04 left to go in this first half of play. It'll be Giovanni Blades and Zach Batustic that will flank Peters working out of the gun on this third down and one. With Andrew the, Griffin with, to the near with side. With a new center. With a new center. It is Blades with a carry. He slips underneath the defenders, and he will have the first down. Needed a yard, picked up two down to the Royal 31-yard line. First and 10, Avon. Ryan Dickinson now into the contest at center for the Orioles, a 6'3", 290-pound junior. As Avon with a fresh set of downs. They've had some long drives, extended drives here against Southeastern. But Avon only with a seven-point lead. It is Laxton's and Griffin to the, as the wideouts to the far side of the field. Blades and Batustic will flank Peters out of the gun, looking over a three-man front. Play action pass. Giffen fires. He's he is got looking. him. Peters is looking for Laxton's in the corner. Touchdown, Avon. A 31-yard touchdown pass. Brandon Peters to Gabe Laxton's. Gabe, Gabe is a big-time Big time athlete. He's you know been primarily a defensive back the entire time he's been at the high school. But he is a you know a six six three six four target. Uh, Avon's gone short all night. You know a little short uh, hitch curl type routes, a little drag routes. That time they play action. He ran right by the the defensive back. They threw the ball up high, and he was able to take it away for the touchdown. Alex Stefan on for the point after the kick is up, and the kick is good. 5.34 left to go first half. Avon now out in front over Hamilton Southeastern. 17-3 back with a kickoff in a moment. This is high school football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. The Orioles go 64 yards in six plays. They take it, it takes about a minute, 55 seconds as Brandon Peters hits Gabe Laxton's on a 31-yard touchdown pass, and Avon extends their lead over Hamilton Southeastern 17-3. Alex Stefan set to kick this one away. He will kick it deep, and it will go into the end zone. One of Alex's better kicks this season. 
And it will be Southeastern starting first and 10 from the 20 yard line. And as coach mentioned before on Southeastern's last drive, they went from running the football to trying to throw it a little more. It still ended with a three and out as the Avon defense came up big. Now we'll see what Coach May and Hamlin Southeastern can do. Now trailing by 14. Well, th th this is not where they want to be. They're, they're uh, trying to get ahead, sit on the football, play good, solid defense. Now offensively, they're going to have to open it up a little bit. You're not going to see play action because they're down two touchdowns. And defensively, first pass by Janney working out of the gun. He tries to swing it over to the far side to Chris Ford and threw that ball pretty much into the ground. It'll be second and ten. We really haven't talked too much about the Avon defense to give you their lineup because, well, simply they've gotten them, uh, they've gotten off the field so quickly. So quickly for the Orioles in the 3-3 stack. Rashawn, Rashawn Brent, Gunnar Larson, and Joe Belden across the defensive front. The linebackers, Matt Thomas, Matt Thompson, Thomas Williams, Zach Williams, and A.J. Elcock. Drew Shaotovich and Nick Handlin are the corners, and Gabe Laxton and Brian Fitzgerald are the safety, second and ten. And here's a nice pass. This is Will Coudre. He is stripped of the football. Ball is loose. And let's see who has the football. It was a nice pass, Janney to Coudre, but it's stripped. And the second turnover of the game for Southeastern as it is the Orioles that come away with the fumble, and they'll take over first and ten from the southeastern 43-yard line as Drew Shadovich looks like he came away with a fumble recovery. Avon's making all the plays tonight. They're, they're, they're playing playing with a, with a lot of poise. They're playing like they expect to win, and right now they're really taking it to southeastern, uh, you know, in, in a manner that I don't think southeastern has seen in a while. We're dominating it every phase of the game. Uh, playing with a lot of confidence. It'll be interesting to see if Southeastern doesn't change their philosophy here and come after them because Avon's moved the ball at will this entire first half. Three wide outs to the far side of the formation on this first and ten. Peters fires over to the right side. Matt Moore with the reception, and he will gain about four yards or so down inside the 40, close to the 39-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds over on the far side by Ryan Brown. It is a pickup of four on the play, second and six. And what a nice re what, a, what, a, what a nice decision by Brandon. That's a three-receiver route. He's reading the coverage. You, you check downfield first to see what's open. They dropped uh, downfield with the, with the two wide receivers. They, they left the third receiver wide open. He made the little dink throw out there. He caught the ball and took it upfield. And, you know, again, my hat's off to the offensive line. He's had plenty of time the entire half to throw the football, and it allows him to make those kind of decisions. Second and six for Avon as the give is to Love. Went one way, and he got planted as coming in to make a hard hit. was a 5'11", 195-pound senior linebacker, Ryan Clements. Pure form tackle, bearing a shoulder right into Darian Love's midsection and driving him back for a loss of about a yard. Ball will be spotted at the Royal 40-yard line and another third down and seven. Avon doing a very good job tonight converting these third downs. It'll be up to the Southeastern defense to see if they can finally get Avon off the field on this third down and seven. Two wide outs to the far side, one to the near side. Peters out of the gun, drops back to pass, fires. He has Andrew Griffin once again, and it is another third down conversion for the Avon Orioles as Griffin takes it down to the Royal 29 for first and 10 for the Orioles. You know, again, they've been playing together an awful long time. Uh, I, had them, I had them in seventh grade, and you can see at that time that they were going to be great players. They have a knack for finding the opening, Brandon has the ability and a strong enough arm to throw the ball on time and hit, you know, hit that receiver in, in, in between the seams. And, you know, right now this first half, it's been a clinic. 4.15 remains in this first half. Avon with a 17-3 lead and threatening. Darian Love with the, with the carry, and he'll pick up a few yards before he is wrapped up around the ankles. Coming in once again, Ryan Clements to make the tackle for Southeastern. They'll give Darian a yard on the play. It'll bring up second and nine. Again, clock under four minutes left to go. First half, 13th ranked Orioles leading the eighth ranked Royals 17 to three. It has been all Avon in this first half, offensively and defensively. 
two Southeastern turnovers. One d led to a direct Avon touchdown. This second fumble has got the Orioles threatening. Pater's pass is complete. He has Griffin. Griffin makes a move, and he will take it down to the Southeastern 21-yard line, where he'll be about a couple of yard yards shy of the first down. I mean, th this is basically just basketball on a football field. They've got two defenders out there trying to trying to cover underneath. Avon's putting three receivers out there. Brandon's reading to see which one they leave open, and that's that's where the football's going. That's the same route they ran earlier that they covered, and he went out to Matt Moore. This time they left uh, left a short receiver open, and he found him and got the ball to him. Third and two, offset eye. Peters play action pass down the middle. Oh! Had Matt Moore all alone down the seam. Pass a little bit, led, led more just a little bit long. Matt probably tell you he should bring that one in. It would have been an easy six, but it's going to bring up fourth and two for Avon. Nice play action fake. Good, uh, good call in that situation. It was third and two. They're obviously expecting to run. He put the ball on the, uh, you know, on his stomach. They bit. He was wide open. We just didn't quite get the completion. Fourth down and two here, and Avon's going for the first. Offset eye to the right as this one's going to stop because there's going to be movement on the offensive line for the Avon Orioles, and that will likely lead to Alex Steffen. What was fourth and two is now fourth and seven, and Alex Steffen is on to try a long field goal for Avon. A little bit of movement on the right side of the offensive line on that fourth and two, trying to get a little bit of a jump as they were going to go over on that side of the field. And Alex Steffen is going to set up for a 43-yard field goal. His long this season is 47, and he is pretty much almost right in the middle of the field. It's a 48-yard field goal. It's a low kick, and it is no good. It is wide to the left. So with 2.48 left to go in the first half, Hamilton Southeastern with two timeouts remaining. They trail Avon 17-3. The fumble does not lead to any Avon points. And Southeastern will head back out onto the field to see if they can do something here to gain some offensive momentum. They've had the one big play to Chris Ford, followed by... The uh, Aaron Mat Matteo fumble on the succeeding play. So they are still looking for some type of offensive continuity as Tyler Janney will work out of the gun. Three wide outs, two to the near side, one to the far side. Janney looks, fires over to the left side, pass is complete at the 22. And off to the races is Greg Miller. Miller eluded one Oriole, ran through another tackle, and he'll take it all the way down to close to the midfield stripe on a nice game. Yeah, I think that was A.J. making the tackle again, chased him down from behind. Might have had help there, I think, from Thomas Williams. He'll spot the ball at the Royal 49-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Hamilton Southeastern. Clock moving, 2.33 left to go first half. Janney works out of the pistol this time. He will give it, he will keep the football, and Rashawn Brent just kind of followed him. Janney might pick up two on the play into Oriole territory at the 49-yard line. It'll bring up second and eight. Yeah, that's fine. Right now, all Avon wants to do is take some time off the clock. Again, play smart, keep it in front of them. You know, they can give up a first down or two here even. Uh, the wind is in the face of Southeastern. Obviously, Southeastern wants a touchdown here. They don't have to settle for a field goal, and Avon, again, is playing good, solid defense. Greg Miller is lined up to the near side along with Chris Ford as Janney back to pass. Fires to the near side, in and out of the hands of Bryant Fitzgerald. Looked like he was looking for Kyle Schrank, but the ball is almost intercepted, and it'll bring up third down and eight for Southeastern. Avon's been in the right spots tonight. They've played smart. They've run to the football. They're putting just enough pressure. Uh, on, on Janney to, you know, force him not to make those pinpoint throws that he'd like to make. And it's, it's really been impressive time of possession and what Avon has done defensively when they've been out there. Kudre to the far side, Ford and Michaelis to the near side. And Coach Scott May with two timeouts in his pocket elects to use one here with a minute 49 left to go in the first half and a big third down and eight. 
Coming up, Avon leads Hamlin Southeastern 17-3. Back in a moment, this is High School Football on Audio Sports Online. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. Southeastern on a big third down and eight after the timeout. Janney out of the gun, back to pass. Fires down the near side, or far side, and it is intercepted by Avon McHandlin as Janney was looking for Chris Ford running the far sideline, kind of on a little fly pattern. There was Nick Handlin stride for stride, and Handlin comes away with the interception. Good play, good coverage, good pressure. Again, Avon's defense, all 11 all 11 people out there clicking, doing their assignments and playing as a unit. It's been a, an extremely impressive first half. The third turnover by Hamilton Southeastern in this contest. Two fumbles and now an interception of Royal quarterback Tyler Janney. And with a minute 43 left to go in the first half, the Orioles have it at their own 38-yard line as Peters looks for some uh, room around the right side. Look downfield, well covered by Southeastern. Pressure also was coming, so he got what he could around the right side. Brandon's playing with, uh, you know, just, just a lot of confidence right now. It wasn't there. He didn't even think to force it, even though he's got a big, you know, big-time strong arm. He took what he could, got out of bounds. They'll call another play, and they'll attack it again here. Second down and eight. The ball, original line of scrimmage was a 33. It's up to the 35 of Avon. Peters back to pass, and he is going to be sacked as coming in on just totally unblocked for Hamilton Southeastern was coming in and making the tackle. We'll get that for you here in just a second. Justin Enda, I believe, came in to make the hit. And it's a big loss on the play because there was nobody there to pick him up. Actually, I believe it was Ryan Clements, a 5'11", 195-pound sophomore, or senior, excuse me, senior linebacker. He came in untouched as Coach... Mark Bless having a little discussion. Well, he's not here. happy. The rule is if your helmet comes off, you've got to take a play off. And I know he's out there saying his helmet didn't come off. Southeastern pulled it off. So he's he's arguing to keep his player on the field. They've got a third and long situation right now where they're still trying to score. And Youngs is an excellent quarterback, but, you know, he'd, he'd like to have a starter out there in this situation. So Aaron Youngs, the 5'10", 160-pound senior out there as Brandon Peters has to come off for a play. And a big third and 15 as the clock winds down to one minute left to go first half. Avon leads 17-3. to three. And they will milk this clock for all it's worth. Play clock down to 10. And Aaron Youngs will let this one go as far down as he can. And now he'll take the snap and give it to Giovanni Blades. Blades is going to be stacked up for no gain as penetration came from Southeastern to stack him up just about at the line of scrimmage. And the rest of the white-clad Royals defenders finished him off. And head coach Scott May of Southeastern will take a timeout with 40.4 seconds remaining in this first half. Avon leads Southeastern 17 to three alongside Dave Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott. Glad, glad you could join us for high school football on Audio Sports Online. A warm, muggy night here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. Stay tuned, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at uh, who else is playing in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference this evening. Also what happened last week, again, 
conference play beginning today for the HCC. As Alex Steffen is getting ready to put this ball away, back deep, Chris Ford and David Herman for Southeastern as they set up shopping around their own 33. Steffen from his 15 puts a foot into it and gets a beautiful kick. Herman will take it at his 32 and he will be met by Brian Fitzgerald and fall forward for a game for a return of a couple out to the 37 yard line. And with 30 seconds, a little over 30 seconds remaining and no timeouts, Southeastern will have the football first and 10 from their own 37 yard line trailing by 14. Yeah, I just happened to notice the long snapper out there, Nick Hibbard has been snapping the ball all year, doing a great job. One of those unsung positions, unfortunately, you usually only get noticed when you make a mistake, but he's done a terrific job out there. He's the son of uh, Scott and Karen. Hibbert, Scott, longtime coach here. Danny was looking to set up the screen on the far side, but Rashawn Brent came through, got a big old paw up there to smack it back, and it'll bring up second and 10. And right now for Coach May, he's got to go into that locker room and spin a few wheels and get some gears turning and just find something to get this Southeastern offense on track. They have been stuck with maybe a play here or a play there, namely the big play from Danny to Ford. But other than that, they have found nothing to get going here in this first half. Here's a long pass. Kyle Schrank pulls it down in Oriole territory down to the 46-yard line. A bullet by Tyler Janney and great hangs by Schrank. Clock stops while they move the change. 21 seconds remain. And now a penalty flag. As they were trying to get that ball snapped quickly and they end up with an illegal procedure penalty that will cost them five yards back to their own 49-yard line. And again, that's fine. A Avon can live with that. It's a, it's, a, it, it's a nice catch and a nice throw, but they're still only at midfield and there's you know, less than 20 seconds to go. So a play like that doesn't kill you. Clock is moving, 13 seconds. Janney back to pass, eludes one rusher. Now throws to the near side, Will Crudre at the 49, and he will get himself out of bounds before coming in to make the tackle would be Zach Williams. But Crudre gets out of bounds. It's a pickup down to around the 47 yard line. It'll be second down. Uh, in about 11, but only five seconds remain. So Orioles are going to make sure nobody gets behind them on this play as really only a long Hail Mary is going to hurt Avon and on this final play of the first half. Janney works out of the gun. Three wide receivers to the far side. Here comes a blitz, and Janney's going to go down as A.J. Elcock just came in from a linebacker position. Shot right to Tyler Janney on a beeline, and he takes Janney down. And for the Avon defense, you couldn't have asked for a better end to the first half. For the Southeastern offense, boy, it's something to go to the locker room and see what happened. We will head to halftime with the Avon Orioles leading the Southeastern Royals by the score of 17 to 3. Back with the halftime in a moment. This is high school football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. 
Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Halftime at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium in the 13th ranked Avon Orioles lead the 8th ranked Fishers Tiger, or excuse me, Hamilton Southeastern Royals. I'm already getting ahead myself by the score of 17 to 3. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. This game tonight, it's the opener of the Hoosier Crossroads Conference season or conference tournament play. And for both of these teams, well, they've got rivalry games to look forward to next week. Avon will be playing Brownsburg, longtime traditional rival at Brownsburg next week. And Hamilton Southeastern, well, they'll be playing at Hamilton Southeastern against the Fishers Tigers for the Mud Sock. It's a big game for both, big rivalries for both. But, Coach, i got to think, this is probably one of the few matchups that both Coach May and Coach Bless, they weren't looking forward to their rivalry games. They knew they had big game tonight. Absolutely. I mean, any anytime you play a... Uh, Scott May, Hamilton Southeastern team, you know you're going to have to come out and play your best. Uh, you know, this, this is as good as I've seen Avon play in a while, and, you know, and, and, and I hate to say it, and I guess there's no nice way of saying it, it's as poorly as I've seen a Hamilton Southeastern team play. I mean, they're just out of sync. Uh, you know, a, a, a big part of it is because Avon's playing so well, but, you know, Hamilton Southeastern is well coached and play hard, and play with a lot of emotion and and tonight for whatever reason they you know they 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 just look a little out of it so i don't know if it's the heat uh if it's the way avon's playing but you know i I expected this to be a good game i certainly came into this game hoping that you know avon would come out the victor but i have to admit i'm I'm totally surprised at the way this first half has gone yeah as coach mentioned if you're an avon oriole fan there's nothing that you take from the first half that you don't like offensively defensively uh, special teams has played pretty well uh, they got the long field goal uh, from uh, Alex Steffen he missed his second long field goal attempt but they've got a long field goal under their belt uh, offensively they are clicking and kind of what we saw if you're if you watch last week's game against Ben Davis as Kyle Kastner was able to kind of look and make his progressions find open receivers, and hit them all game long and make big third down conversions. Well, now Brandon Peters is doing that tonight against Hamilton Southeastern. He's making his reads, and when Avon is at third and medium, third and long, he's finding Andrew Griffin. He's finding Matt Moore. I think he found Braden Luce on a nice uh, reception for a big third down conversion. And tonight, it's Peters and the Orioles making those big third down conversions. Well, when, when, when you have a player like Brandon Peters, he brings out the best and and, and and a lot of the other players. I mean, the offensive line know that if they can protect a little bit longer that, you know, he's, he's going to find the open receiver. The receivers know if they run their routes hard and get open. You know, a- Andrew Griffin continues to make, uh, you know, big, big-time catches out here. Matt Moore, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's their tight end's going to Ball State, but if there's a better tight end in the state than Matt Moore, uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I've seen him yet. I mean, he's athletic. He blocks. He makes catches. He's a. He's a, somebody that they have to defend against because he can do so many things trying to get open inside. Derek Tennant, when he's healthy, is a big time running back. And uh, you know, the two guys that have replaced him out here tonight have have both run hard. So offensively, they're clicking on all cylinders. And you know, we, any of us that have coached a while have been in this situation. And it's. It's, it, it's going to be fun down there at halftime tonight because I'm sure Coach Bless and his staff are going to take a couple of minutes to pat him on the back, but then you got to kind of light him up a little bit because you got to make sure they still come out the second half and continue to play with the same intensity they played with the first half because you know those guys over there in the white shirts are, are, are coaching their, you know, their rear ends off, and they're going to make sure that their kids come out the second half you know, and play with a lot more emotion than they played the first half. I was... I was just really totally surprised with the lack of emotion out of Southeastern tonight. They, they, they usually are one of these teams that are just ferocious on the field, and they didn't seem to play with that kind of intensity the first half. The Southeastern offense, well, they've had a couple of nice plays. You can think of the nice play from Tyler Janney to Chris Ford that was about a 40-yard pass reception, but on the very next play, uh, Aaron Matteo, he put it on the ground. That was one of four turnovers by Hamilton Southeastern. Two of them led to scores by Avon. 
So a team that comes in tonight uh, averaging uh, just a little bit. Uh, let me have it here in just a second. Uh, they were rushing for almost 200 yards a game, and uh, they were uh, throwing it for 126 yards a game, uh, 300 yards of offense. Right now, they're probably sitting maybe on 80 yards total offense. Uh, Southeastern just totally discombobulated at this time. They've uh, they put the they've turned it over four times. We can think of a couple of other times they probably should have turned the football over, as the Avon defense has uh, has reacted very well. They've covered the receivers well. The running game has pretty much been non-existent for Southeastern uh, after the Matteo fumble. And once they got down by 14 points, Coach, it looked like Southeastern decided doesn't look like running the ball is going to be our strong point tonight, which has always been a Southeastern strong point, and they're having some problems in the passing game. Well, they're going to have some problems mentally. I mean, this is where they usually are. They usually like to get out by a couple scores and, you know, let that running game and that good, solid, fundamental defense kind of take over in the second half. Well, now they're down, they're down two scores, and, you know, defensively, Avon has come up with four turnovers. I don't think Avon's turned the ball over at all. So, you know, Hamlet Southeastern's defense is going to have to do something to disrupt the, uh, you know, the the sink that Avon's offense is in right now. And, you know, on the other end of things, Avon's defense has played as solidly as I've seen them play certainly this year. They're, uh, they're playing with a lot of emotion. They're not giving up any big plays. You know, a play here and a play there, but... Southeastern is going to, you know, they, they can't come out and run the football and, and, and be in the offensive philosophy and style that they're, that they're used to being in. So they're going to have to come out here and throw the football and mix it up and open things up a little bit. And if they've got a couple trick bags, you know, plays that, that, that they've practiced during the week, we, we might see one or two of them out here in the second half. They have to do something emotionally to get their kids to come out here and play with a little bit more emotion, especially on the offensive side of the football. If you're a Southeastern fan, you're still wondering, well, what's the real Hamilton Southeastern team? The team that uh, struggled at times against uh, Carmel but lost only by the score of 14-7 or the one that trounced North Central last week 38 to nothing. Right now it's looking a lot more like the team that played against Carmel, but we still have a half a football, and it's really only a two-score lead for Avon. But Hamilton Southeastern, they're really going to have to get their offense in gear. For Avon, it's to keep go, keep on keeping on, as they would say. Take what you did in the first half. Let's carry it into the second half and get out of here with a win heading in to the Brownsburg game next week. We're going to take a timeout, and then we're going to take a quick look around the Hoosier Crossroads Conference coming uh, tonight as conference play begins. This is High School Football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger today. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. 
Visit McNamara Floors for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Floors is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 Tasty Specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Halftime at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. The 13th ranked Avon Orioles lead the 8th ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals by the score 17 to 3. Let's take a look at what's happening in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference. Last week, this was the uh, being this is the first week that we have HCC play. Last week, of course, Ben Davis defeated Avon by the score 57 to 27. Brownsburg came away with a big win. They defeated Lawrence North by the score 28 to 14. That win put Brownsburg back into the AP polls as they uh, rose up to number 12 after last week's win. Hamilton Southeastern, as I mentioned, they defeated North Central 38 to nothing. Noblesville had no problem with Hamilton Heights 34 to nothing. The big game, Pike and Fishers, it took a late touchdown uh, drive by Bo Trudeau and the Pike Red Devils. They defeated Fishers 26 to 22. Another big game, Southport defeated Westfield 37 to 26, and Zionsville defeated Lebanon 18 to 3. Action tonight, Brownsburg is at Franklin. That is the lone non-conference game with the seven teams in the HCC. That means one team will always be playing a non-conference game. Tonight, the Bulldogs travel to Franklin. A bit of a story if you are not aware of what happened at Franklin over the summer where two of their football team members uh, unfortunately passed away trying to save a classmate uh, during a swimming accident. Uh, they are playing with some heavy hearts and playing with a lot of emotion this season. Uh, they were 2-0 and coming into tonight's game with the Bulldogs. Of course, the Orioles and the Royals here. Noblesville is at Fishers tonight. That's going to be a big game. And Zionsville is at Westfield next week. Rivalry week. Avon is at Brownsburg. Zionsville is going to take on a very tough rebuff uh, team uh, at Zionsville. Fishers is at Hamilton Southeastern, and Westfield is at Noblesville. And so uh, a lot of great football, a lot of great football going on in the state of Indiana, especially in central Indiana. And Avon Oriole fans, you saw the number one team or the number two team. I'm going to say number one because I have them ranked number one. Uh, the number two team in the state, Ben Davis. They were playing a huge game tonight uh, in, against fellow uh, Metropolitan Conference member Pike and sectional rival. And right now it is the Giants leading Pike 21 to nothing. Kyle Kastner and that offensive group. We know Pike has a very explosive offense with Bo Trudeau at the helm, but right now they are running into a Ben Davis team that I said after I saw the polls come out this past week and Ben Davis was left as number two, that there might have been a lot of poll members just wondering, well, how about Ben Davis's defense? Are they as good as Carmel? They are pitching a shutout against the Red Devils in the first half. And uh, even though Carmel and Warren Central is playing tonight, uh, that's going to open a lot of eyes uh, should uh, they go. And uh, we are taking a look. Uh, Westfield is clobbering Zionsville 38-8. Jake Gilbert still doing a fantastic job 
with the Shamrocks, and they're just laying it to Zionsville. Uh, Andy Echeverria, he's taking over for a legend there in Larry McWhorter with the Zionsville Eagles, and uh, he's going to have some, some uh, first-year uh, jitters, as you might say, as we were looking at some other scores. Brownsburg actually is leading Franklin 17-14, to and Carmel and Center Grove are tied at 7. So uh, a lot of great football going on, but we still have a half of football left to go here at Avon where the Orioles and the Royals uh, are locked up. Avon leads 17-3. to uh, Fishers is leading Noblesville uh, 16-6. to So, again, next week for Hamilton Southeastern fans, we will be at Hamilton Southeastern next week. I, yours truly will actually have the call of that game. I'll be there uh, as it is the battle for the Mudsock, Hamilton Southeastern, and the Fishers Tigers. That game will be uh, at Hamilton Southeastern. Pre-game will be at 645. Kickoff for that game is set for 7 o'clock. You Avon Oriole fans, you can tune in to the Orioles and the Bulldogs. That game takes place at Brownsburg. Uh, I know Chris Worley will be on the call. I believe Troy Weimer will also have the call of that game for Brownsburg. You can watch that game on Audio Sports Online. Uh, you can also, if you are in the Brownsburg area, listen to it on 1610 AM XRB Radio in Brownsburg. We're about ready for the second half kickoff as it will be Southeastern receiving the kick to begin this second half. And they've just pretty much got to be looking for any type of offensive spark. They'll get the ball to begin this second half. And Coach, uh, I, as you said, Coach May is in there. And I don't know what more you tell them than you say, you got to buckle down, you got to play harder, and you got to want it more than the other team. Well, they, they have to make some plays. You know, they we talked about how Brandon Peters was converting a lot of the, you know, third, third and five, third and six, third and seven for Avon. Southeastern didn't do many of that. They did have the opportunity. They had the long pass. Looked like it would go for the touchdown, and Nick Hanlon made the, uh, you know, the touchdown saving tackle. They need, if they're going to get back in the game, they need to come up with uh, – you know, a, a long touchdown play uh, of some kind just to get their momentum back. You know, right now they're kind of playing, uh, they're, they're not playing with a lot of emotion right now and until they come up with something, uh, you know, to cause them to play with a little bit of, of emotion, they're going to struggle. And again, a big part of that is just because Avon's defense has just flat out played great the first half. It is still a very warm, very muggy night here at Avon. The wind has died down. It had been blowing from the south. The flags, if you might see, uh, are uh, that were standing on end earlier in the first half. Well, they're dying down somewhat, so the wind is dying down. It is still a very warm and muggy night, but right now we don't see any threat of rain or thunderstorms at this time, so we're, uh, it's good to go hopefully here for the second half. Alex Steffen is ready to kick this one away as Chris Ford will be back deep. They will kick it, and that ball will go into the end zone. And Alex Steffen, who didn't start this season as the primary kicker for Avon, seems to be getting a stronger and stronger leg uh, with every single game. This is his second kickoff into the end zone for a touchback. And it will be Tyler Janney and the Southeastern Royals taking over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line to begin second-half play. And they trail Avon by 14 at 17-3. to Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Janney will work out of the gun as they send two wideouts to the far side, one to the near side. Now Kyle Schrank will move tight end right to tight end left. Janney waits, gets the snap, and he gives it to Matteo. And Matteo is going to get a couple of hard-earned yards over the left side. It's a pickup of three on the play. It'll bring his second down in seven. Yeah, right, right now Avon's defensive front has just dominated Southeastern's offensive line. And, you know, I haven't seen them blitz a lot. Uh, Elcock and uh, uh, Gunnar Larson and, and Belden and I, I think, uh, who's the other defensive lineman in there, Rashawn? Rashawn Brent. Yeah, Rashawn Brent, they're, they're just doing a tremendous job right now handling the offensive line of Southeastern's. Janney with a quick strike. He was looking, and a penalty flag is going to come in. He was looking for Greg Miller, and Gabe Laxton's was in coverage, and they might have Laxton's for getting there just a second and a half a second too early, and that's what the call will be. Pass interference against the Avon Oils. That's their first penalty, or excuse me, uh, that's their first big defensive penalty of the game. 
I, I think we're going to see a little bit more of this. You know, that's they're, they're, they're not going for the home run, just a little short pass. You know, at this point, I think they're they're hoping for a little catch and run. Uh, they're not getting a whole lot of time to throw the football. Throwing the football is something that they can do, but it's certainly not their strength and it's not their comfort zone. So I think we're going to see some little short passes, a little tight end to the flat type thing. You know, play action right now doesn't mean as much when you're down two touchdowns, but they're certainly going to have to throw the football a little bit more than they'd like to. So the ball will be marched up to the 38-yard line will be first and 10 for Southeastern. Back to pass is Janney as Miller over the left side. He'll be brought down after a nice pickup of about six, seven yards before Gabe Blackston brings him down. But again, another quick strike. Tyler Janney over to Greg Miller. And this time we're, we're seeing Janney just basically take a two, maybe three-step drop and get the ball out of his hands and, in and a hurry. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, Avon just has to be patient. I mean, you know, seven, eight yards doesn't kill you, a score kills you. So they just have to be patient. You know, let them complete all the passes they want underneath and just, uh, you know, try to fly to the football. This is Mattiel going over the left side, needed two, got about two and a half, maybe three up to the 49 yard line. But once again, it'll move the chains as for the first time, really, we're watching Hamilton Southeastern make a couple of plays, move, get a couple of first downs. and. They'll have it first and 10 from their own 49 yard line. They will bring Miller and Ford to the near side. That's Chris Ford in the slot. And Janney will this time go under center. Schrank will come in motion to the near side. And Tyler Janney will drop back. Pressure comes, eludes Brent. And he will pick up some nice yards. Rashawn Brent came from his defensive end. Nice job by Tyler Janney to elude the rush and then simply bring it up the middle and pick up about four on the play. So to bring up second down and six for Southeastern as they're in Oriole territory at the 47 yard line. Yeah, Coach Coach Bombay's mixing things up. You know, we, we've had, Avon has had a couple of defensive linemen just come clean. So I don't know if it's, you know, a great scheme and something that Southeastern hasn't seen or they just had some errors in their offensive line scheme. Second down and let's call it seven is the give is to Matteo and he finds some room right up the gut. He'll take it inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. It's a pickup of about eight, nine yards on the play and it's another first down for Southeastern as they're moving the ball and moving the chains. But, but again, they're still 40 yards away. So, you know, from a defensive point of view, if you're Avon, this is okay. You know, I mean, you don't want to see them get a whole lot of momentum. But what you absolutely don't want to see them do is put points on the board. So a first down or two you can live with. They're still 40 yards away. Ford to the near side. Kudre to the far side. Janney will work out of the gun. And we're going to have a jump is right over the nose guard. Gunner Larson came across and popped Ty Scholl. And that's going to be five yards against the Avon Orioles. That you don't want to do. You know, that's that's that mental breakdown that they didn't have the first half that, you know, you, you don't want to get complacent here just because you're up by two scores. So a free five yards will make it first and five for Southeastern. The ball now inside the 35 at the 34-yard line. Janney will give it to Matteo who will look for some room around the right side. He'll find a yard, a very tough yard at that before he is popped by a host of Orioles and Joe Belden among them. It's a gain of maybe a yard. It'll bring up second down in four. Clock moves, 8.47 left to go third quarter. It is the opening drive of the third quarter in Southeastern now extending this drive, eating some clock. And they have it down at the Oriole 33 yard line, second down in four. Schrank will go in motion to the far side. Tyler Janney works under center. And penalty flags will kill this play as a false start is called against Southeastern. So a offside encroachment against the Orioles and now a false start by Southeastern. And what was second and four now becomes second and nine. So move the ball back to around the Oriole 38 yard line, make it second down and nine for Southeastern. As both teams trade five yard penalties on this series. Chris Ford will go to the far side, Will Kudre to the near side. 
Janney will work under center. He'll look over the front of Avon. Clock under 10 seconds on the play clock. Play action pass. Janney goes back and loots a rush. He gets pop. He's looking deep, and it's incomplete. Great coverage by Gabe Laxton's looking for Will Coudre coming down the near side, down the hash marks almost. Tyler Janney eluded one Oriole defender. Another came in and delivered the hit as Janney got rid of the football. And the pass slightly underthrown, and it falls incomplete. It'll bring it third and nine. And this is right where Avon wants to be. Third and third and nine, they're probably going to have to throw the football. They're in a situation here into the wind that if they don't get close, they're probably going to have to uh, punt the ball and give it back to Avon. Greg Miller is the wide out to the near side on your screen with Ford in the slot. Janney on third and nine, drops back to pass, and the pass is incomplete looking down the far side. I believe that is Kudre over there on the far side. Actually, that's Will Michaelis. Pass is incomplete as it goes to the turf, and it'll bring up fourth down and nine, and David Herman is on to punt this ball away. So Southeastern gets a few first downs on this drive, but the drive stalls, especially after a illegal procedure penalty, and Herman will kick this ball away. It will bounce, and it's going to be a great punt that will be down out around the Avon five-yard line, just outside the five-yard line. So Herman pins the Orioles back, and the Orioles will start their first drive of the second half, up 14 with 7.51 left to go in the third quarter, just outside, uh, just out the foot nose of the football on their own six-yard line. Good, good first series for Avon. You know, they bent a little bit, gave up a first down or two, but, you know, again, no points on the board. They've got the ball back. Let's see if they can keep that offense clicking like they did the first half. So Peters will work under center on this first and 10 from the Orioles' six-yard line, and he will give the ball. Coming to the near side is Giovanni Blades, who's getting the bulk of the carries here. Derek Tennant was a game-time decision. He is not playing tonight. Darian Love started the game, but right now Giovanni Blades getting the touches and uh, getting a few nice runs. It's a gain of four up to the Oriole 10-yard yeah, line. And, and playing very well, playing very solidly for a kid that, you know, to my knowledge hasn't had a lot of varsity time, but he's playing like an experienced veteran. He's doing the job that he's been, uh, you know, been asked to do tonight. That is Gabe Laxton's working the slot over there on the far side on this second down and six, working out of the eye. The ball runs. Gabe Laxton's at the 50, and they couldn't bring it down. Gabe Laxton's had beaten everybody by 10 yards, and Peter showed what kind of an arm he had. It was just out of the reach of Gabe Laxton's, maybe at the fingertips. It falls incomplete. It'll be third and six. Well, good, good play action pass. The ball was on the money. You know, Gabe is primarily a DB, and he's a great athlete, but you know, you, you could see he was trying to make a decision down there to catch the ball. Do, do, do I have my arms down? Do I put my hands up? And, you know, I think that little indecision caused him to drop the ball down there on what would have been a sure touchdown. Third and six on the delay. They give the ball up the middle. I believe that's Giovanni Blades once again. He'll pick up a couple of yards, but that's all. And will bring a fourth down, and the punting unit will come on for the Orioles. And, again, not, not, nothing wrong with that series for Avon. They uh, – Put the fear of God in him. Probably should have had a had a touchdown. Uh, you know, Brand, Brandon is always a threat, and anytime you have that big time quarterback in there, it just you know makes the defense corner in front of the other team sweat a little bit because you never know when when he might come up with that big throw. But again, not not a bad series. If we get a decent punt here in coverage, we're going to be back playing some field position defense. Well, Alex Stefan would be advised to kick this one away from Chris Ford. And he kicks it sky high. Herman will take it at the 47. He eludes one tackle to the 40, inside the 35, down to about the 33. A very high kick. That allowed the Oriole kick team to get downfield, but Herman's able to elude one tackler and make a nice return to the Avon 33-yard line. And this time, Southeastern, once again, excellent field position. 
They're in Oriole territory at the 33-yard line with six minutes and 10 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And the Orioles still lead by 14 at 17-3. to three. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Tyler Janney brings the offense back out onto the field with uh, excellent field position here to start this drive at the Oriole 33-yard line. Janney will work out of the gun and bring Shrank in motion. Now he goes in reverses. And it'll give it to Matteo, and Matteo will not find a whole lot of room. Joe Belden was the first to hit Matteo, and Zach Williams cleaned it up, and it'll be a loss of maybe a yard and a yard and a half on the play. Yeah, the, the, the defense in front of Avon has just dominated tonight. Uh, you know, it looks like they're, they're, they're not really doing a lot. They don't have to do a lot. They're just personnel-wise right now beating them up. Janney back to pass, down the middle, passes, tipped, and drop. Gabe Laxton's had a chance as tipping the ball up was Matt Thompson. Laxton's thought he had a chance maybe to come in with the interception, but the ball falls to the turf, and Southeastern, after great field position, now they're facing a third and 12 from the Oriole 35-yard line. Yeah, that ball hung up there enough that I think a lot of guys thought they might have a chance to get it. Two wide outs to the left, one to the right. That's Chris Ford. Tyler Janney works out of the gun, looking over a four-man front. He'll drop back to pass, looks, fires downfield. Has Chris Ford, but overthrows him. Nick Handlin in coverage for the Orioles. Ford had a step on Handlin down the near sideline, but the pass is overthrown by Janney, and it'll be a quick three and out for Hamilton Southeastern with excellent field position, but they go backwards. And once again, David Herman is on the putt. And once again, the Avon defense did their job. Three and out, lots of pressure, good solid, uh, good solid pursuit, and great coverage in the secondary. Herman back to kick as Andrew Griffin and Matt Thompson. Penalty flag will go as we will have a false start against Southeastern. Give Herman maybe a little bit extra room. He pinned the Orioles deep on his previous punt back at their own six yard line. And now Andrew Griffin and Matt Thompson will set up shop at around their own 10. They'll plant their heels on the 10 and let the ball sail behind them if it, show, if it does so. And this is bad, this is shanked. Wow. And maybe, all. Maybe, maybe, maybe five yards tops. David Herman just kind of stood there after he punted the ball at the 50 and stared, uh, just wondering where this ball was going to be spotted. And, and it is going to be spotted at the 30 yard line. So things go from bad to worse for the Royals as this punt will give the. Orioles this start this drive, excuse me, at their own 30-yard line with 529 left to go in quarter number three. Avon still leads 17-3 to three as Brandon Peters in the offense once again back out onto the field. Peters back to pass, fires. There's Matt Moore. He just sat down in the zone at about the 35-yard line, waited for Peters to see him, and Brandon delivered the football for a quick and easy five, six yards. That, that's that's become a staple in the Avon offense now. You know, even though they're up by two scores and, you know, they're out here, that's that's almost like a sweep play for some teams. Uh, you know, Matt Moore is a go-to receiver. Uh, Andrew Griffin, uh, <coughs> Luce has caught the ball very well out here tonight. They, you know, they're, they're moving the football around to a lot of different receivers. Well, give him seven yards up to the 37-yard line, second and three. Here's a pass. There is Andrew Griffin at the 40-yard line. He eludes one tackle and finally will run out of bounds at around the 49-yard line. And a great job by Andrew. Just got just beyond the sticks, made sure he had the first down first, then caught the ball and got some nice yards after the catch for first down for Avon at their own 49. Well, they're, they're, they're mixing it up real well. I like the game plan Coach Moore has come in with. It's you know almost like a boxer. I mean, it's jab, 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 and then... Every now and then they'll go deep, and they've hit the one home run and dropped the other, so they're, they're being very smart about the way they're attacking this defense. Here is Peters, pulls it down, Southeastern comes, and Brandon L is wisely just going to throw this one out of bounds. 
He had ideas to go, I think, toward the right side, but the receiver was covered up on that side. I think that was Braden Luce. And then the pressure came from Hamilton Southeastern. And one of the reasons why we see Brandon Peters with two collegiate offers already after his sophomore seasons is plays like that. He had, was getting pressure and elected to just make sure to throw the ball away and live for another day. Yeah, I heard at halftime he got invited to come up and visit at Notre Dame this week too. So I think there's lots of people finally realizing that uh, Brandon Peters is a big-time quarterback. Three wideouts to the near side on this second and ten for Avon. As the give is up the middle, Giovanni Blades will take it up the field down to the Royal 39-yard line and pick up of about 12 on the play. And a good run by the senior Blades gives the Orioles a first down. Avon's just, just, just playing so well right now. A lot of confidence running the football, offensive line doing what they need to do up front. Uh, throwing, playing, catch. I mean, right right now they're clicking on all cylinders. First and 10, Avon at the Royal 39-yard line. 419 left to go third quarter. Avon with a 14-point lead. Peters back to pass. Good pickup as he swings to the near side. There's Cole Rightly with the catch. And now Brandon getting everybody into the act as he gets it into the hands of a split end. Rightly down it to the Ori- or Ro- excuse me, the Royal 33-yard line. It's a pickup of six. And he had all day to make the throw. I mean, they they didn't have anybody anywhere near him. He had had all the time in the world to find the open receiver. Cole was wide open short. He got him to football, and we're still, you know, continuing to move the football. This time they'll send trips wide to the right as Peters back to pass, swings it out to the far side. Matt Moore with the catch, and he's not going to get a whole lot more after that as the weak side backer. Colin Miller comes in and stands Matt Moore up after a gain of maybe only a yard on a fine tackle in the open field. Well, again, they're they're, they're overloading the zone. I mean, they're putting more guys out there than they can defend. You know, Southeastern basically is saying, we'll let you throw short and come up and make the catch. And Avon saying, we're up by two scores. We'll be happy to to take that. Uh, Brandon Peters showing, showing, you know, lots of poise out here. Uh, We're throwing to open receivers. Uh, Coach Moore mixing things up, a little run, a little pass, but, but you know, nothing crazy. You know, they're, 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 they're not going deep. They're running just a couple of basic offensive plays with the running game that, that, that have had some success, and they're just very wisely taking what Southeastern's giving them. Gabe Laxons is lined up as a wide receiver on the far side of the field. Peters is back. He looks Laxons' way, and Gabe makes the catch, and he is run out of bounds over on that far side by Matt White, but it's another first down for Avon inside the 25-yard line down to the 24 of Hamilton Southeastern as the clock stops with 3.05 left to go in the third quarter, and the Orioles now moving the ball methodically down the field. And, and, they're, and they're doing it a lot of different ways. You know, they've been going to that little flood that I've talked about a couple of times where they put three receivers over on the wide side. That time, Southeastern defended it a little bit. They left a one-on-one on the back side. Brandon was smart enough to see it. They took advantage of it for the first down completion. A delay. This is Giovanni Blades around the right side, dives forward for a pickup of a couple of yards. They'll spot him about the 20. Well, they'll spot it at the 23-yard line, a pickup of about a yard, second and nine as the clock moves at 2.45 left to go in this third quarter. Nothing, you know, nothing fancy. They, you know, they've only had a couple of running plays. They're running that little inside zone. They run the draw a little bit. Uh, you know, the pass patterns that they've run, maybe four or five good ones, but they've all worked, and, they've, you know, they've hit the people that are open. Peters working out of the gun with three wideouts, drops the football, picks it back up, plenty of time. Great protection, and now he'll fire into the corner. And he had Cole Wrightley on the near side who had stopped the route. Matt Moore was dragging the goal line, but Brandon just basically throwing this ball away. It'll be third and nine. And he, he could have sat back there another 10 seconds. Uh, you know, if we've got the offensive line line up here, this might be a good time to give them a little recognition because they have just played tremendous football up front the entire night. That'd be Nick Shoemaker, Zach Ryan, Ryan Dickinson, Ross Carter, uh, and is uh, also in there as we have third and nine. 
Two wide outs to the near side, one to the far side. Peters back to pass, gets some pressure, steps up, fires over the middle. Had Andrew Griffin, but great defense there is coming over is Grant Skelton, a 6'1", 185-pound junior linebacker. He had Griffin covered. He knocked the ball away, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, one of the few times tonight that, it, you know, it looked like Brandon might have forced it in there a little bit, but you know what? When you can throw the football like he does and you have the confidence that you have in a, in a receiver like Griffin, sometimes you just go for broke. Alex Steffen with a 40-yard field goal attempt. He's hit one. He's missed one. He missed one from this distance. This is a kick is up, has the distance, but this one is missed as he has missed his second field goal of the night. And for Southeastern, well, if you're going to be uh, – uh, if you want to hold a little bit of hope, they at least li limit the Orioles to no points after Avon methodically marched down the field. And now Southeastern still only down by two scores with 2.09 left to go in the third quarter, 17-3. to They have the ball back at their own 20-yard line. So it's been uh, both teams... Either quickly off the field or this long drive. We'll get to a break here as soon as we can. Tyler Janney, now they'll go with a jumbo set. As Janney is back to pass, fires over the left side. Pass is complete. This is Kyle Schrank, and he just rumbles up the, the far sideline. Picks up a nice chunk of yardage, 14 yards on the play, up to the 34-yard line, first and 10 for the Royals. But again, at this point in the game, that's something Avon's Avon's very happy to give that up. You know, that's a nice catch and a nice play. It's a first down. They're still on the 34-yard line with, you know, with a long way to go to get in the end zone. Janney works under center. Wide receivers to the left and to the right. As Tyler gives the pass, gives the handoff off to Matteo. And Aaron Matteo will pick up a couple of yards. Up to the 30, just past the 37, shy of the 38-yard line. And it will be second down and a long seven as Chris Ford will come to the near side. Will Dre to the far side for Hamilton Southeastern. Matteo, the lone tail back behind Janney under center. Janney back to pass, fires left side. Pass is complete. Penalty flag comes in late. Joe Belden back there with Tyler Janney. Pass is complete down to up to the 48-yard line and we're going to have a penalty against the Avon defense that's going to tack on a few more yards after the end of this play. So nice completion by Southeastern to the 47-yard line. And and then tack on another 15 after that, a huge penalty against the Avon Orioles. And this will march the ball all the way inside the Oriole 40 to down to about the 38-yard line. So first and 10 southeastern, a minute 25 left to go third quarter. They're in Oriole territory at the 38. Janney gives it to Aaron Matteo. He finds some room around the left side. Eludes one tackle to the 25, and he finally is going to be pushed and steps out of bounds on the far side, and there is... Well, there's an Oriole down. There's a few people down over on that far sideline. That might have been Gabe Laxton's over there on that far side. Nice call by Southeastern that time. Little cutback play, little zone play. They made it look like they were going to the right. Uh, they brought the back all the way backside to trap the defensive end and cut it up inside of them. So, you know, that's a play where you take advantage of uh, – good defense you know the, the the defense of Avon has been pursuing very hard to the ball uh, Southeastern can see that and designed to play to come and you know take advantage of their over pursuit we've got an injury timeout on the field we'll take a timeout as well with a minute 14 left to go in this third quarter Avon leads Hamlin Southeastern 17 to 3 this is high school football on ASL Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show 
taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino Nodell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 260. It was Gabe Blackston's that was injured, but he ran off the field. Here's a gift to Matteo. He eludes one tackler and skirts through and gets the first down. Looked like he was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. But before you knew it, he was scooting through into the second line of defense for the Orioles, and he has a first down for Southeastern at the Avon 12. Yeah, South, Southeastern has put together one of their better drives of the night, but, you know, as, as I've said many times before, they're still not in the end zone, and, you know, we're, we're at the end of the third quarter here. Here's Matteo once again, and he gets another good yard gain before he is brought down. Matt Thompson... The six foot, 205 pound junior linebacker is able to stop him before he gets into the end zone. And we have a timeout on the field. 45.9 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Back in a moment, this is high school football and ASL. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. Hamilton Southeastern with a second and three from the Oriole five-yard line. 45.9 seconds remain in this third quarter. Offset eye to the left as Janney goes under center. He gives it to Matteo. Matteo buries right through the heart of the line. He won't get to the goal line, but he will earn the Royals a first down as the ball will be spotted right at about the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal Southeastern, and they are quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Tyler Janney under center. He'll take it himself. Look for some room on that left side. No signal yet. Still waiting. And finally, the signal comes from the far sideline as Tyler Janney is in the end zone on a one-yard touchdown plunge. And Southeastern has their first touchdown of the game with 33.8 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They trail 17-9 pending the point after. So what is basically going to be an eight-play drive that does cover 80 yards, helped in no small part by the 15-yard personal foul penalty by Avon. And now a false start penalty is Freddie Hoffman is just going to pick up the tee and move another five yards back. So now he's got a 25-yard point after attempt. which is huge right now it is an eight point difference kick is up it is on the way and the point after is good 33.8 seconds remain in this third quarter and southeastern trims it to a seven point deficit back with a kickoff this is high school football on aso McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Flores is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Tyler Janney runs it in from one yard out to cap off an eight-play 80-yard drive in a minute, 24 seconds, and the point after is good to make this a 17-10 Avon lead as Hamilton Southeastern gets ready to kick this ball away with 33.8 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Southeastern with their first touchdown of the night, due in large part as Avon helps them out with a 15-yard personal foul penalty. That allowed 
Southeastern take the ball deep into Avon territory and they finish off the drive with the touchdown. Brady Hoffman set to kick this ball deep. Andrew Griffin and Brian Fitzgerald are back deep for Avon. Hoffman with a kick. He sent everyone into the end zone, but not this one. This is taken at the 1 to the 10, 15, 20, 25 to the 30. And finally written out on a very, very nice return all the way. Ryan Fitzgerald will take it to the 35-yard line on a 34-yard kickoff return, and the Orioles will have pretty good field position to begin this drive from their own 35-yard line up by 7. 26.7 seconds remain in the third quarter as Brandon Peters and the offense back out onto the field. They had a nice drive. But it was a 40-yard missed field goal by Alex Steffen, and this time now some of the or now the Orioles again with another little mental mistake as Gabe Laxon's got in move motion a little bit too early up, and it's going to be a five yards against Avon. So spot the ball back at the 30-yard line where it'll be first and 15. Big series here. If Avon could put together a couple first downs, and especially if they could take it down the field and, uh, and, and put some points on the board, it would be big. A three and out gives Samilton Southeastern some hope. Here's a give, and this time Giovanni Blades goes absolutely nowhere as he has met behind the line of and scrimmage he, and he's hurt. by Colin Miller, and he is slow to get up. Darian Love, and he has made it limping over to the <laughs> sideline as Darian Love is now into the game. So Blades, who has had bu a bulk of the carries in this game for the Orioles, is now on the sideline as they ch the training staff checks him out. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. We'll head to quarter number four as the 13th ranked Orioles lead the eighth ranked Royals of Hamilton Southeastern 17 to 10. Back with the fourth quarter right after this. This is High School Football and Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Welcome back to Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School. Fourth quarter about to get underway with the Orioles of Avon leading the Hamilton Southeastern Royals 17 to 10. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Brandon Peters has a second and 18 as he will drop back on the play action. Looks downfield and now he will go down as great pressure from Hamilton Southeastern coming up to make the play was Tiger Guillory. And he lost some yardage all the way back to the 25-yard line. And now Avon with third and a half acre to go as they need to take it all the way up beyond their own 45-yard line for the first down. That, that, that little nastiness that I said was lacking in Southeastern the first half seems to come back. You can see it's getting a little... Uh, a little chippy out there right now. They, you know, they scored a touchdown. They're getting back into it here a little bit more mentally here right now. Third and 21 as Peters will work out of the gun. He's looking downfield. Fires has looking for Andrew Griffin and just overthrew him. Andrew Griffin has a penalty flag and it's a holding penalty against Avon, which will likely be declined. And they will decline the penalty, and that'll bring up fourth down. So right after Southeastern is able to score their first touchdown of the contest, 
they not only hold Hamilton or Avon to a three and out, they push Avon back 10 yards. And now Alex Steffen is on to punt as once again Chris Ford and David Herman will be back deep for the Royals at around their own 45 yard line. Steffen with a nice high kick. Ford will take it at the 41 and drop the football. And the ball is loose. Let's see who comes away with it. It has been the story, and they said that Ford was able to recover the football for Hamilton Southeastern. They have dropped it four (laughs) times tonight, or turned it over, I should say. Another fumble, but this time they come back and are able to recover the fumble. And now Southeastern with a golden opportunity, first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Trailing by seven was still over 11 minutes left to go in this football game. So Janney and the offense back out onto the field for the eighth-ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Matteo to his left, wide receivers left and right. He'll look over a four-down front for Avon. The give is to Aaron Matteo. He looks for some room, and all he finds is... His, his face mask between the four and the four of Joe Belden for no gain. Joe Belden coming along from his defensive end position to fill up the hole and plant Matteo for no gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, good defensive play, great penetration. You know, and, and you expect, expect players like Joe Belden to make those kind of plays. He's a big-time player. Second and ten for Janney in the offense. Southeastern trails by seven. Here's a read option, Janney will keep it. He will elude one tackle, still on his feet, and he will take it all the way down into Oriole territory at the 35 yard line before he is brought down. A.J. Elcock and a few other Orioles, but a nice run by Tyler Janney down to the Avon 35 yard line. You know, it's a, a variation of the play that they had so much success with on the last series. They faked like they were going strong. They brought it back into kind of trap the backside defensive end and Janney faked the ball and kept it a little little nice little counter play Kudre to the near side Chris Ford is to the far side Matteo is the lone tailback Janney will work under center first and ten they give us to Aaron Matteo he will take it into the line and pick up a yard or two and the ball is loose saw the beanbag fly from the referee and Matteo for the second time tonight has put it on the turf and for the fourth time, it is, uh, or fifth time, I should say, Avon comes away with the turnover. Well, you know, I just mentioned Avon's defense needs to make that big play, and, and they did. I don't know if they stripped the ball or it was just a good hard hit or he was carrying the ball carelessly, but that, that turnover was huge because you could just start to feel the, the momentum a little bit here starting to turn towards Southeastern, and now it's back in Avon's favor. So it'll be first and 10 for... Avon from their own 33-yard line, 17 to 10 is our score. 9:56 left to go. Here's the give right up the middle. Darian Love to the 45, up to the 50, and into Hamilton Southeastern territory at the 49-yard line. Great play to start the series. Avon's offensive line again knocking Southeastern back. Uh, Darian Love hit the line of scrimmage with a full head of st- steam, and off he went. They're over on the. Uh, the right side of the 50-yard line right now, and that's a good play to start a series. Giovanni Blades, who left after limping off the field, Love replaced him, and now there is a Royal down at the 43-yard line as moving slowly off the field is Colin Miller, but he gets up off his on his own power, and... It's 1st and 10, Avon from the Southeastern 49-yard line. Clock moving, 9.40 left to go in this football game. Cole Riley to the near side, Andrew Griffin to the far side. Batustic and Love in an eye behind Brandon Peters. Here's a give to Love. Moves back to the near side, and he picks up a nice game. Went to the left, didn't find anything. Cut it back right and picks up about seven yards on the play. Well, Avon's offensive line here, and the entire offense knows that they need to kind of reestablish the, the line of scrimmage. And first couple of plays here, they, they certainly have done that. They're coming off the ball very hard. 
Ball is at the southeastern 42-yard line. It'll bring up second down and three. Clock moving, under nine minutes left to go in the football game. And I backfield behind Peters. Brandon gives the love. Darian didn't find a whole lot of room. He eluded one tackle, is coming up, looking like to make the play. Uh, originally was Clayton, Caleb Clayton, but Love eluded him, and Darian's able to pick up the first down and move the chains for the Orioles down to the southeastern 38-yard line. I haven't seen, you know, at least from up here, I haven't seen any changes in the defensive philosophy from southeastern. They're still playing that same 3-4 that they started in. They're still not blitzing very much, slanting the line a little bit, but again, they're just trying to run run down plays and not give up big plays. So first and 10, Avon, Cole Riley to the near side, Andrew Griffin to the far side, tight end right for Avon. A hey, backfield, here's a give to Love as he will be stopped after a gain of a couple before Matt White can stop him for good, but it's a pickup of four down inside the 35 yard line, second and six, Avon. And again, anytime you get four yards on first down, you know, I, I feel the offense wins. This down again, <laughs> three or four yards keeps you on schedule, and that's, that's really at this point all they want to do is just start cranking out first downs. Brayden Luce now into the game as a wide out. He starts to go to the far side. Now he and Andrew Griffin a little confused. Luce will go to the left, Griffin to the right, seven on the play clock. Peters works out of the gun, flanked left and right. Play action works to the near side. Finds Zach Batustic, who looks it in. Zach in down to the 20 yard line. Batustic leaked out of the backfield, bobbled that ball for a moment. Good concentration, brought it back in, and he takes it down to the southeastern 20. <laughs> yeah, Zach, Zach's one of those kind of unsung heroes. He's a tough guy. He's another one of those kids I coached in seventh grade. He's hard nosed as can be. Uh, you know, he's he's a blocking fullback, and that's what he does most of the game. You don't even know he's here. Uh, they put him in the game. He makes all the holes for the running back. He got an opportunity to make a big play there on a little bootleg play with him slipping out into the, to the flat, and he made a great catch at a key time in the game. Love and Batustic in an eye as Matt Moore now moves over from tight end right to tight end left. Peters under center. Here's a give to Darian Love. He will take it right up the middle and pick up three or four yards inside the 20 down to around the 17-yard line. Clock continues to move. We're under seven minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Avon with a 17-10 lead. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Avon led this game by the score 17-3 at the half. Southeastern scored. Their lone touchdown here in this second half. Avon still looking for their first points of the second half. Yeah, and, and any score here is going to be huge. You know, field goal, touchdown obviously would be would be big, but, you know, the clock is in our favor now. We're down to six minutes. Peters, play action pass, looks right side, fires. He touchdown. has Braden loose. Loose eludes a tackle, and he will take it in from 18, from 17 yards out. Braden Luce had a, or, a Royal, excuse me, defending him well, but couldn't be brought down, and Luce rumbles in from 17 yards, and it's a huge touchdown as Brandon Peters hits Braden Luce, and it is Alex Steffen on for the point after. Nice series, nice confidence, you know, when... Again, you're, when you know your quarterback can make plays, people are, people are going <laughs> to work a little harder. The offensive line did a great job. Zach Petustak made, made the big catch coming out of the backfield. And, and, and Braden Luce right there, not only did he make a nice catch, but he made the great move in the open field, got hungry and got in the end zone. And, you know, with, with Avon up two scores here now, the game isn't over, but that certainly will, will allow the coaches to relax a little bit more on the sidelines and uh, – you know, if it was just a one-possession game. Alex Steffen on for the point after. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 623 remains in this football game. The 13th-ranked Orioles lead the 8th-ranked Royals 24-10. Back with a kickoff in a moment. This is high school football and ASL. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown florist since 1954 with eight convenient locations including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. 
McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Brayton Lewis is on the receiving end of a 17-yard touchdown pass from Brandon Peters. It's a drive that covers 67 yards in seven plays, three minutes and 33 seconds off the clock. And Avon is now out in front, 24 to 10, with 6.23 left to go in this football game. Stefan back now to kick this ball away as Chris Ford and David Herman are back deep for the Royals. Stefan puts a foot into it. He'll kick it to the far side. It'll be taken at the 15 to the 20, 25. Gets a hold to the 35, 40, 45, 50. One man to beat, and it will be Gabe Laxton's, but a penalty flag all the way back at the 22-yard line in the illegal block by Hamilton Southeastern. Negates a fine return by David Herman. Herman would have given the Royals excellent field position, needing a couple of quick, uh, needing a quick score, but this illegal block will move the ball all the way back deep into Royal territory on the kick return. Yeah, that end, that ends up being a 60-yard penalty. They might only march off 15, but they lost the the 40 extra that he got on the run. So instead of being deep in Oriel territory, this ball is going to be spotted at the Hamilton Southeastern 13 yard line. And now the Royals really have their backs against the wall. Still six minutes and 13 seconds remain in this football game, but Southeastern is down 14 and they will start deep in their own territory. They have a full complement of timeouts as Tyler Janney brings the offense out. He'll work out of the gun. Janney back to pass, has some pressure. Looks, eludes, and will not last long as Thomas Williams, the 5'10", 220 senior middle linebacker, comes in and makes the sack. And there is a Royal down as well. As the sack is back at the five. We're going to take a quick timeout with an injury on the field. Six minutes left. Back in a moment. This is High School Football on ASO. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Ty Scholl is the player that was down for Hamilton Southeastern, or excuse me, Jeremy Wolfer. As he is coming gingerly to the sideline, so add insult to injury as the sack will move them, the Royals, all the way back to their own five-yard line to make it second down and 18. So Southeastern trailing by 14 with six minutes left to go in this football game. And they have their work cut out for them, so the penalty kills a long kickoff return and now a sack puts the Royals even further back. Janney will work out of the pistol. He will drop back to pass from his in, own end zone. He looks to run, looks to fire down the field and he will throw this ball away. Penalty flag comes in late. Well, they've definitely got linemen downfield so that, that needs to be one of the flags. So an ineligible man downfield and things, if you want to say, could they get any worse for Southeastern on this series? They're just getting worse by the minute as an ineligible man downfield. As 
does. It is only half the distance to the goal, but it will still be second down and a long ways to go. Southeastern needs to take it to the 20, just beyond the 23 yard line for a first down. And this ball will be spotted on the outside of the two. Warren Central leading North Central. It is Westfield all over Zionsville as we get ready for third down and 21 from the Southeastern two. We'll try to get you some scores in a minute. Janney and the Royals in a world of hurt right here as the Orioles will have their ears pinned. Here they come, they fire downfield, looking for Will Coudre, but Tyler Janney just simply had to get that ball out of his hands as pressure was coming. Drew Shadovich was in coverage of Coudre down the far sideline, but it's gonna bring up third down and 21 now for Southeastern, or excuse me, fourth down. So they will look to punt this ball away and they will not have a whole lot of room to do much with it as David Herman's gonna have his feet almost planted on the back line of the end zone. 532 remains in this football game and they get this football away. As a matter of fact, Herman gets a beautiful punt Griffin loses it, then he gets hit, but they'll say his knee was down, and boy, Scott May is gonna be all upset about this one. Ball was loose briefly, and when Andrew Griffin regained possession, his knee was down, and that is where the official is gonna mark the ball immediately, saying that once he gained possession, the play was over. So now Southeastern Finds themselves trailing by 14. Avon has the ball, first and 10 from the Southeastern 47 yard line. And is there a penalty flag on the play? Let's see. And they indeed are marking off penalty. Did not see the flag but they're marking off a major 15 yarder here. Did not see the signal. Unsportsmanlike conduct is being called against Hamilton Southeastern. So Coach Scott May is gonna be very livid on about six, seven, eight, ten 10 different fronts by the time the Royals get back to Fishers this evening as the Orioles will start this drive first and 10 from the Southeastern 32 up 14 with 523 left to play. Here's a gift, Darian Love looks to the near side, cuts it back inside, just dragging Royals now with him. And he will get nine yards on the play on a fine run by Darian Love who came in for Giovanni Blades. Of course, Derek Tennant did not play, start this football game. He's been having a bit of a nagging thigh injury. He tried to give it a go before the start of this game, but Coach Bless told me on the field before tonight's game, it would be a game time decision. And that decision was that Derek Tennant would not play. Giovanni Blades ran the ball well for Avon. Now Darian Love is in there doing the same on this second down and two for Avon. Clock continues to move, 437 remains in this football game. Avon content to milk the clock. And Peters does that with two seconds on the play clock. He gives it to Love. Love looks for some room on the right side. Didn't find a lot. Matter of fact, maybe no gain at all. and It'll be third and two. Brandon Peters showing some of that leadership and, and a veteran already as a junior, milking that play clock all the way down to four, three, two seconds before snapping the ball as we get ready to go under four minutes left to go in the game. But two stick and love will be an offset eye to the left. Wide receivers to the left and right on this third down and two for Avon. Peters will watch the play clock wind down and he will snap it with two seconds left. The give us the love, find some room. He'll have the first down. Down past the 22, down to the 21. Needed two, picked up three. And the Orioles now just bleeding clock as the chains will move and Hamilton Southeastern, they have all three of their timeouts remaining, but with Avon up two scores, and if you could see the radar like we can see the radar, everybody's gonna be wanting to get out of here in a big hurry. 
clock moves, 3.30 left to go in this football game, and Peters once again winding the clock, play clock down. He'll wait until there's just a couple of seconds remaining. Two seconds, ball is snapped, here's Love, looks for some room around the near side, finds a hole and takes it down inside the 15. And he's going to pick up a good eight, nine yards to the southeastern 13-yard line, a pickup of about eight. And it'll be second down and two as we're under three minutes left to play in this football game. Yeah, Avon here is doing what they need to do. They're just putting the finishing touches on a, on a, on a really strong four-quarter football night. They've uh, run the football. The offensive line has done a great job. The running backs are running hard. And, you know, right now they a, a, a score would be okay. All they really want to do right now is run the football, run the clock, and get out of here without any injuries and look ahead to next week. As the play clock hits two, Peters has the ball snapped, gives to Darian Love. Love will have the first down at the 10-yard line. So as we look ahead toward next week, of course, Avon will move to 2-1. and one. They'll have a Hoosier Crossroads Conference win under their belt, and they'll have it against a very good Hamilton Southeastern team. Southeastern maybe not showing it here this evening, but Southeastern will still be a force to reckon with, as they always are. The Orioles will play Brownsburg next week. That game is at Brownsburg. You can watch all the action right here on Audio Sports Online. Troy Weimer, Troy Weimer, excuse me, and Christopher Worley will have the call of that game. While Hamilton Southeastern will head back to the Fishers area, they will have the Fishers Tigers next week at Hamilton Southeastern. I will have that game with you uh, next week. The pregame will be at 6.45. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock as the Royals will take on the Fishers Tigers for the battle for the mud sock. It'll be a very long bus ride back to Fishers for Scott May and these Hamilton Southeastern Royals. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of stuff to go over this week in particular, mainly keeping your hands on the football. Turnovers have killed Southeastern in this game. And really they have not had good success running or throwing the ball. They've had a couple of nice drives, but for the most part, uh, it's been total domination by the Avon defense. Braden Luce will work to the far side, but this is now, this game is now in the hands of Brandon Peters, Zach Batustic, and Darian Love. Peters will bend under center, give it to Love. Love will go straight up the middle, and he will pick up. A good five yards down to the five, six yards down to the five yard line, or it'll be second down and four. Southeastern did use a timeout there while we were jawing about. But the clock continues to move, and when they, the Orioles snap the football, it will be under two minutes left to go in this football game. 24 10 is our score. Avon led. 17 to three at the half. Southeastern cut it to a seven point game, but Avon answered back and now it's a 24-10 game. Here's Dorian Love, looks for some room around the left side. He will punch into the end zone from five yards out. And, and Avon will end up with a huge, huge victory here tonight, Dorian Love caps off the drive as he plunges in from five yards out. And the point after is about to be attempted by Alex Steffen. Steffen's kick is on the way and it is good. A minute 38 remains in this football game and Avon leads Hamilton Southeastern 31 to 10. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. This is High School Football and ASO. Stop in any Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. 
McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maine and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger today. Darian Love scores from five yards out. Navon now comfortably out in front, 31 to 10. They have controlled this football game all game long. Southeastern was able to get it within a, within a touchdown, but Avon answered back, and now they lead 31 to 10 as Stefan kicks off. Southeastern will take it at the three to the 10, 15, 20, 25, and Herman will finally be brought down at about the 30, and he's still running. And he'll finally be brought down to the 49-yard line. As, and the ball is loose, and once again, here's Avon coming away with it. And I believe it was Alex Steffen, the kicker, that recovered the loose ball. Alex Steffen recovered the fumble. As Ben Davis and Pike, we were just looking at a score, 34-28 Ben Davis as that game has gotten wild and woolly. And as we turn our attention back to this one, the sixth turnover for Southeastern. And... That's just going to give coaches nightmares, gray hairs, bald, bald heads, and and a whole lot of uh, mean, nasty stuff. As Avon has the ball first and ten at the Royal forty-six yard line after the fumble, a minute twenty-seven, and Avon's going to go into a victory formation. And I'm sure Scott May is not going to even bother with a timeout especially after he's watched his team for all intents purpose hand this ball off to hand this victory off to Avon so there's a minute 13 with the clock running we are uh, we're going to actually forego a little bit of our post game tonight as we are watching storms getting in here so they're going to want to clear this uh, they're going to want to clear this area out fairly quickly as we are under a minute left. For Avon, they'll move to 2-1 and one on the season, 1-0 and oh in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference. For Hamilton Southeastern, they drop to 1-2. and two. They will be 0-1 oh in HCC play. Avon will go travel to Brownsburg next sure. week. You can watch that game on Audio Sports Online with a kickoff set for 7 o'clock. And Hamilton Southeastern, they will be home next week to take on the Fishers Tigers. Sure. Pre-game at 645, kickoff set for 7 o'clock as we wind this one down. A very, very impressive showing by the Avon Orioles. They bounce back after getting pretty ma pretty much manhandled against the second-ranked Ben Davis Giants last week. They lose by 30 last week to Ben Davis. They come back and win by 21 against the eighth-ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Coach, we just got a, we've just got a minute. As you said, a very impressive game from Avon's standpoint. <laughs> And uh, they'll try to take that momentum into next week against Brownsburg. Well, from start to finish in every phase That's of the game against too. just a, a really quality football team. I mean, this 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 wasn't a weak team or a weak program that they beat, and they they dominated the offensive line. They ran hard. Brandon, uh, you know, had his usual good game throwing the football, and defensively, I mean, we do, we just got after it the entire night. Uh, I don't know what five six turnovers out here and. You know, that, that comes when you play aggressively, and, you know, that's the way we play from start to finish. Coach Bless and his coaches, you know, right now have to be feeling a lot better. Uh, you know, they got away with it also with their, you know, number one outstanding uh, running back, Derek Tennant, not playing tonight, so that's a good sign as well to know that these other kids can come in and do the job, and part of the reason that they could do it is because the offensive line played so well. For Coach Scott, being the Hamilton Southeastern Royals, they're going to have a long bus trip back, and, Pretty much, you, you don't know what you really can say other than you put the ball on the turf six times. Not much work to offensively either in the running or the passing game, and you couldn't really stop this potent Avon offense. So, Hamilton Southeastern, they have a lot of work to do before they face a very good Fishers team. It is at Hamilton Southeastern, that vaunted Hamilton Southeastern student section. The crowd will be wild. The Mudsock game is always a big game. As it is for most rivalry games, throw the records out. It will be a big game, and Southeastern will look to bounce back <laughs> this week 
taking on Fishers next week. Again, your final score from Hendricks Regional Health Stadium, the 13th ranked Avon Orioles knock off the eighth ranked Hamilton Southeastern Royals by the score of 31 to 10. Alongside Dave Shelburne, I'm Brian Scott. Thanks for joining me tonight. We'll see you next time on Avon and Hamilton Southeastern football on Audio Sports Online. A reminder, you can watch a replay of tonight's game sometime by tomorrow afternoon at audiosportsonline.com. Also, look, look for Audio Sports Online on YouTube. That way you can share this game with your friends and family. Until next time, so long, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Avon Varsity Football on Audio Sports Online. Tonight's game has been brought to you by McDonald's, Reynolds Body Shop, McNamara Florist, and Red Cobra Wrestling. Get a free on-demand replay of tonight's game by visiting audiosportsonline.com. Oreo Football is an audiosportsonline.com production.